Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Shet, episode 499, featuring a little game called Dwarf Fortress. Uh, now this game came out back in 2002 as freeware. It's designed by a couple of brothers. Uh, let's see those brothers' names. Tarn, that's an unusual name, and Zach Adams. <laughs> now let's see if I can get one of these, uh, maybe both of these, or at least one of these guys on the show. That'd be pretty sweet. Uh, but anyway, uh, this game's been through some iterations, obviously, since 2002. It's uh, started off as an ASCII version. I'll show you a little bit of that in a minute. Uh, then I got some Steam updates and a tutorial uh, was introduced. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> probably a good time. It's good as ever to jump in there and see what all the fuss is about. Uh, short story is, damn, what a game. I really, really love this game. I've already sunk 130 plus hours into it, and I'm, it's painful for me <laughs> to have to stop playing in order to make a video and, and, and to post it. You know, I just want to get back in there and keep keep the uh, <laughs> uh, keep those uh, dwarves or dwarfs, I guess, as uh, some of the community people call them, uh, working. Uh, still not an expert, as you'll see. A lot of things I'm still learning about the game, but uh, I think you'll enjoy this. And if you haven't played it, uh, you definitely want to check this out. Uh, you can pick it up at Steam. I think it's uh, $30, $30 right now on Steam. I haven't checked to see if it's on uh, GOG yet. But anyway, I think it's well worth the money. You want to support these guys, keep this project going. Uh, anyway, without further ado, here is Dwarf Fortress. All right, folks, so there we go. This is a game that I've been wanting to cover for years now. Uh, Dwarf Fortress. People have been talking about this, saying, Matt, why the heck haven't you covered Dwarf Fortress? Come on, man. It's a modern-day classic. <laughs> You'd really love it. You know, it's, it's right in your wheelhouse. Uh, I was kind of hesitant to, to play it because it was all uh, until, I guess, relatively recently. I don't know exactly when they shifted to these uh, tile-based graphics, but it was originally uh, a completely uh, ASCII-driven game. Let me see if I can get a pic. Maybe there's a picture of it here on Wikipedia. Yeah, here we go. So you can see what it what it looked like. <laughs> you know, you have, uh, I mean, it's one thing to play Rogue where there's really not that many different characters they need to symbolize, you know, Z for zombie or whatever. You know, you could sort of keep track of it. But this was a little intimidating for me. Just too many letters and symbols and things to have to try to memorize. Like, what is that? What is that? I and mean, what's this little squiggly? What's that quotation mark? What's, you know, it's, it's too much for me. Uh, so I was, I was kind of uh, hesitant. I was kind of intimidated by it, I guess. Uh, so I wanted to wait until they got a little bit more user friendly. Uh, so that's what happened. The Dwarf Fortress uh, the Steam version came out. And I don't want to get into the history of this on this video because I posted on, I'll post a link in the, in the show notes. There's already some great interviews with Tarn Adams, a couple of brothers that uh, I think the other guy is named Zach Adams. Now you can uh, listen to those. There, there's already some pretty good coverage, <laughs> you know, how this game came about. So I'll uh, defer to those guys uh, with that. But just me personally speaking here, I wanted to, uh, you know, wait until they had some tile-based graphics like this so you don't have to, <laughs> you know, a chair looks like a chair, a table looks like a table. You know, you don't have to memorize a bunch of uh, obscure arcane symbols. I know a lot of people like the arcane symbols. Don't want to knock those guys. <laughs> Hey, you know, it's, there's some value, I guess, in having people walk by your computer and they're like, what the hell is going on? What are you like? What is this, alchemy? <laughs> you know, you feel like a super genius because you can play the original Dwarf Fortress and the glorious ASCII. Uh, but anyway, uh, I kept hearing that it's a great game with a steep learning curve. And I'm like, man, I don't have time to learn this deal with the steep learning curve, you know. Um, I want. I prefer something with a tutorial mode. <laughs> sort, of, sort of a little hand holding, just kind of get me started. Uh, so they, the news. I, I talked about it in one of my match out episodes. They had uh, announced a tutorial level or a tutorial uh, sequence to kind of ease players into it. So it's like okay, okay, you know, I, I think it's far enough along now for me to really jump in here and and uh, see what it's all about. And, and I got to say, man, I just, this thing got its hooks in me. It is just hard to describe. Uh, like I say, I, I've played a lot of the similar games to this. I've played a lot of RimWorld. Great game, loved it. Now, there's so many games that this inspired are sort of similar. 
And uh, you watch that video with the developer to get some of the uh, inspirations. He talks in there about Rogue, of course. Uh, Sim City, I think he mentions. Uh, a game that comes to my mind, or what it makes me feel like the most, is uh, playing The Settlers. If you remember that back in the... I guess it was out on all the systems. I played it on the Amiga. But that sort of real-time thing where you got all these little guys building things and you know, you're dealing with raids and, and the military, trying to get your economy going. There's just a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff to, to keep track of, a lot of micromanagement, but, but holy crap, man. <laughs> this It's been a long time since I've played a game that just, you know, it, it literally, you hear about this all the time, but you start playing this thing and next thing you know, it's like three or four in the morning and you're pissed off that you got to go to bed. <laughs> like... <laughs> You know, you're dreaming about this. You go to bed, you're thinking like, oh, I, you know, as soon as I wake up, I want to do X, Y, and Z, and I think I got that figured out now. I mean, it's, it's just one of those kinds of games. Uh, so I, I'm just really excited about it. I, I'm going to say a couple other things here before we start. Uh, it's in active development. You know, so there's lots of little problems and things. They're still working on, like, things with the interface. A lot of the sort of irritants, <laughs> irritating things or stuff that doesn't quite work uh, right. You know, I don't know if you're watching this video a year or two from now, that might not even be a thing anymore. I mean, I don't even know if the game would be, maybe they, you wouldn't even recognize what I'm playing. We're going to play here today. I mean, it's moving that fast, apparently. Uh, but hopefully, you know, I, I don't say that to try to put people off of this. You know, if you're concerned about, well, maybe I should wait a couple months until the X, Y, or Z is, is done, or they polish this little bit of the interface, or make you know, do this, that, and the other thing. You know, I, I would uh, just go ahead and jump in. There, there's plenty enough here uh, to keep you busy. And the stuff that still needs a little work or that they're currently working on, you know, that'll just be a little bonus. Probably by the time you're ready for that content, you're bored with the, what, what's what's here, which I very seriously doubt. You know, there'll be some new thing to play with uh, around the corner. You can, you can jump back in. And also, it's not the kind of game where it's a big deal if you lose or if you make a city, you, you jump in, you start making things, it all goes to hell. <laughs> it's not not a big deal. You know, you it, half the fun, I think it's the most fun for me is when you're just starting out anyway. And one of the cool things is, is we'll get into, uh, if you make a fortress and it crashes and burns, you can uh, abandon it and start up a new a new city in the same game world. And that old one will still be somewhere else. And so that'll still be there. In this sort of persistent world, so it's it's just a really well thought out. You know, I don't know to what extent this is just serendipity or how much of this was actively uh, planned out, but <laughs> wow. Uh, anyway, I'm going to jump in here because there is again so much to talk about, and I don't want to portray myself here uh, as being an expert in the game. I want to mention that too. There's a lot of tutorial videos you can watch uh, if you want to see, uh, you know, somebody who really knows what they're doing. So I'm not putting this out there as any kind of a definitive guide. But, again, if I get some stuff wrong, that's okay. You know, I wouldn't want to... There's not just one way to play this, and half the fun's losing anyway, but... <laughs> I'll, I've, I've tried my best to avoid any just outright howlers or errors, uh, so I'll try to keep those to a minimum, but... Uh, let's go ahead and just... You know, I'll just go ahead and create a new world, I guess. Uh, all right, yeah, every part of this game we could talk about for hours, okay? <laughs> Get the volume down a little bit here. It's kind of deafening in my ear. There we go. Okay, let's see. I think there's a whole other mode of gameplay called the, the Adventurer mode that they don't have implemented yet. Again, there's plenty enough stuff. So I play a medium world. Wow, I didn't even know there was a larger... I've only been playing on medium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> History, number of sieves, um, number of sites, number of beasts. You know, I just I haven't had any issues with the way this is set up. You know, if you play it enough times, I guess you might want to give yourself some extra challenges or make things a little bit more interesting. Like the mineral occurrence, I could see where you might want to back that off so you have some, some more reasons to trade. You know, it's kind of, it would be fun if you couldn't make everything yourself and there were some some things that you just had to have traded and that would add to the challenge oh, i never play with mods either good god there's a let's just go ahead and take the and take the defaults <laughs> you know i like to say there's it's a default for a reason 
I never had any issues. There's nothing with this default version I, I'm annoyed by. It's probably just fine to play on it. And there's our game world. It's a lovely generated map. And this is, you know, it's establishing ancient history. It's all procedurally generated. Uh, that term of emergent gameplay gets thrown around a lot for this. Which I just love. Uh, one of the things I love about this game, I'm, I'm so bored with the games that feel like they have to have this elaborate Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin style, you know, thing going on. Like, that's all anybody fixates on is these characters and their relationships and, you know, trying to bring politics into it, modern politics. Uh, it's like, ugh. Yeah, I, I wish more games were like this. <laughs> Where it's just like all about the, the gameplay mechanics, but also the, the story that you create. You know, the, the narrative emerges as you play. You know, I, I think that's great. I love, prefer those kinds of games. Uh, let's see, play now. Yeah, so we can see all this history, the sweltering ticks. <laughs> yeah, there's so much charming stuff too with the way the, the names they come up, the dwarves come up with for uh, cities and towns and guilds and uh, taverns. You could get in and change it and come up with your own names, I guess, but I. I'm just always kind of impressed. I like the sort of randomness of it. it. Looks like there's something called Legends mode. I'm not sure what that is. It says Adventure mode is coming soon. Uh, let's just go with the Fortress. I think that Adventure mode is an effort to kind of make it more of a rogue-like experience where you have a character. I'm not quite sure what all that's about. Now here's the tu the vaunted tutorial, and I gotta say this this tutorial was a bit lacking. In my opinion, it's it's probably better than no tutorial, obviously, but man, they could have done a lot more. Uh, my two biggest nitpicks with the game, I'll go ahead and get this, this out of the way. I have three big nitpicks with this. Uh, one is the interface is still, I mean, it's better than I guess it was back in the ASCII days. I haven't played the ASCII version, so I can't speak to that. But there's so many times when you're like, man, I wish I could get some more information on this, or, you know, I wish there's just a little bit more info on this screen, or I need to be able to sort this table. There's lots of little issues like that that keep cropping up. There's a lot you can do with macros, hotkeys, you know, we once you get more into it. Um, but still, you know, there's, there's just so many times you're, you're booting up this wiki, and go ahead and show this too. Oh, I guess I can't show it right now, but uh, there's a wiki called Dwarf Fortress, uh, let's give me the address for you, yeah, Dwarf Fortress Wiki, and that thing is like a godsend, you can be constantly uh, switching to that, you might even want to have it just open on another screen, keep it handy, because you've got to be referring to that quite often uh, to get the details on things, uh, a lot of good tips there, good strategies. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, what are we doing here? Click the map and zoom around to find an embark location. <coughs> okay, so what? You know, if you got any sense, you know, you probably don't want to start off like in the middle of a hot desert or in the <laughs> Antarctica or something. One of the nice things about that tutorial is that it will pick a place for you and just stick you somewhere nice with a lot of resources and, you know, some people to trade with. You know, there's a lot to consider, even like at this stage. Like, where do you want to embark? You know, do you want to be real close to other people? If you put yourself right next to another group, they might start raiding you and you have to deal with all these, this military stuff right off the bat. On the other hand, if you're too isolated, you won't get the trade caravans and then you'll be missing out on that. You'll be really alone. Uh, let's see, we want to... I like to have wood. <laughs> it's kind of important. Uh, also some mountains and not too... Uh, I played on a couple frozen maps and they're kind of a pain trying to get water. Let's just look at our options here. Uh, I like something on a river so we can use some water power. Have a source of fishing and fresh water. I'm not really seeing a place I really like on this this whole map. I'm <laughs> just that picky. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking for like a river with some mountains and some forest, just everything I might want. Might not be able to get just the perfect place. But, you know, if I hover over a spot like this, so I got clay, I got deep soil, light aquifer. That means there's going to be some water under under the ground, and that could be a pain. If you get like a heavy aquifer, 
then you have all these flooded levels and there's ways to deal with it but you probably don't want to deal with it on your first your first try so maybe uh <clears throat> what do we have here it's warm i like that woodlands good has some trees uh, it's got a stream so i don't know if the stream will be powerful enough for the water wheel uh, if it's just a little brook, it might not be powerful enough. I'm not jumping ahead with some of this stuff. Iron, gold, silver, copper, nickel, zinc, platinum, tin, lead. Okay. <laughs> I got humans and goblins. Uh, not too far away. So maybe this would be a good spot. You know, I don't want to... You can overthink everything in this game. Uh, but generally, I, I guess it's... I guess you could really just embark anywhere and you'd be okay. It'd just be a different challenge. Let's go ahead and embark... Uh, we can pick a precise location. So let's see, maybe. Let's see, there's our clay over there. I like to have clay and sand is actually very useful. Definitely don't want a place with no trees. I don't even know how you do it with no trees. How would you have enough? You need to make beds. And the only thing you can make beds out of is uh, wood at the moment anyway. A lot of little quirks like that don't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, let's see. This has got... Oh, heavy aquifer. Don't want that. No way. <laughs> uh, let's look at that. I'm not really sure if if it doesn't have any aquifer. Does that mean there's no water anywhere underground? Not actually sure about that. Oh, I'm trying to find a spot that has trees, but not heavy aquifer. <laughs> I might not be able to find just that perfect spot... Maybe I'll come away from those mountains a little bit. There's a light aquifer. Very deep soil. Oh, this one's got sand soil. I don't see clay, but again, you can't, you can't always get exactly what you want. I'll tell you what, before committing, uh, let's just kind of scroll around, see what else we can see. No trees there. This one's got sparse trees? No, I want... I don't want to do it. I've been there before. Trees sparse. I want like enough trees to be able to make all the beds I need. The perfect location. Alright, this is probably about as good as you're going to get. I'm a little too far from the mountains, but uh, if I position right there, I could just. I want to get just the tip of that stream or whatever that is. Okay, so woodland, moderate, shallow sand, soil, a lot of good flux stone, that's important. And it looks good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try this place. You've selected an area with a light aquifer. Water might need to be pumped out or carried away. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't like the sound of that. I, I thought it, I didn't see where it said aquifer. Why does it say that? I don't see aquifer. Where does it say that? That's... Could it be wrong? <laughs> it doesn't say there's an aquifer. Oh, what the hell. Yeah, a light aquifer is not the end of the world. Okay. And you could uh, set it so that you could pick everything that they come with. All their sort of starting equipment. Again, not going to bother with that. Uh, you've arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven, seven dwarves. Get it? <laughs> We're Snow White. Well, maybe I'm Snow White. Yeah, yeah you're Snow White in this game because you're in control of the seven dwarves. Not that I don't know if she was in control. Anyway, I'm getting all, almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. Yeah, so we're going to need to get some trading goods going and get uh, everybody safe and snug underground. Yeah, we're not really in a hurry here. We can always pause it and look around so we get dolomite is good because that's the I believe this can make uh, oh, that's a flux stone. I'll go ahead and show you this, some of these screens here. So if we go in, I think it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, stone use. There's a table here, so I go to labor and then stone use, and you can 
this is one of the I wish they had these nice charts for everything in the game so you could get a, a good sense of this but if you look here at dolomite it says it can make pig iron bars and steel bars so that's really good that's a flux stone and without that you might not be able to make the really good weapons and armor so I'm gonna go ahead and say don't use it select to use a non-economic job so I don't want them building with dolomite because I want to save it for the when we start to make steel let's see turn off the limestone as well because I don't want them making like mugs and stuff <laughs> if I'm lucky enough to find these I don't want like a bunch of you know, dolomite mugs uh, and then I wouldn't have enough to make steel with okay so that's enough of that <clears throat> So we got some sand, got some trees. I can go ahead and get these guys to chop in some of these trees down, so I'll have that. Uh, another thing I like to do is uh, look at the plants. So these these above ground plants have to be farmed above ground, which is an issue because all the baddies are up here, and you you don't want, at least in my experience, you don't want people messing around. You want to try to minimize, I guess, the dwarves going up to the top and doing stuff up here. It's okay. You can build walls and stuff, but it's just a little bit safer, I think, to try to keep everything below. I mean, they're dwarves. <laughs> well, we got raspberries up here. It's like some strawberry plants. So some hemp would be useful. You can use that for clothes. So we can take notes and think about what we might, what we had to work with here. Okay, just kind of looking some long one grass I think it uh, can also be used for uh, making paper and clothing and we can see what kind of animals we got looks like we got a donkey <laughs> female donkey three years old uh, you could milk these actually make milk with got a cow that I like to see cows are great for horse leather and milking and looks like got some alpacas I believe they can also be milked and, and sheared once a year, so you can have some some nice wool. What's this little guy here? You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> goat! I guess my friend Kevin would love to see this goat. Alright, and then your animals, of course, will start reproducing. If there's a male and a female, you know, hey, hey, hey! Looks like a couple of cats. Do I have any dogs? There's one dog, looks like. Stray dog. We can do lots of fun stuff with dogs. <laughs> you know, I, ha I hate to say it, but I've had games where they uh, they were on the menu. Yes, sir. Okay, then we can go ahead and make our little... Figure out where we want to dig in here. Use the mouse wheel to kind of go out. They call them Z elevations. You can see on the side here, up and down. I'll just find a spot kind of there's not a lot of other stuff going on I'll go ahead and make a little stairwell here okay you could just do the one but I go ahead and do a nice big stairway so the way you do that you select uh, where you want it to stand so down here you see what's gonna happen there so this is gonna make a big a uh, yeah, big ass hole. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> uh, a big hole in the ground with stairways going down. And I'm going to hit spacebar to unpause, and he'll start digging this out. And we can we can put hatches over this later. <clears throat> I haven't had a whole lot of issues with uh, with raids. You know, the I don't know if I'm just uh, I tend to make a militia really early and I can just send those guys out there to dispatch them. I have had games before where a huge army showed up and just obliterated me. So I guess that's always a, a, you know, a possibility. Okay, so this first layer here looks like it's just sand. You probably don't want to be uh, you know, trying to do too much stuff on the sand layer. You can't make a farm up here. You can't farm on the sand. At least. No, I guess you can farm on sand. Uh, but the problem is you can't make... Uh, you can't smooth out the walls like you can with stone. 
I'll go ahead and carve it out a little bit. I think I've only got the one, uh, you know, the one little minor dwarf here. Go ahead. And, what I'm trying to do is just make a little space. But uh, I want to try to get some beds made before these guys get sleepy. Okay, you carve that out a little bit. Let's go ahead and make another one of these sort of three-tiered uh, systems here so they won't get a little like a bunch of little ants coming out of a small hole. And this is a uh, loamy sand, so again, we're not to the stone yet. This is a uh, loamy sand. That'd probably be pretty good for our farms or underground farms. Yes, you can farm some stuff underground for certain crops. <clears throat> this little guy and get to work. I don't really want to put too much stuff on this level either, though, because of that problem of not being able to smooth out the walls. So I'm actually going to go one more layer down and see what we got. Oh, wow, still dealing with. Still haven't hit the stone level. Wow, we're already three levels down. I have to go one more, maybe. Oh, and it's still... Wow, we're going to have to go deep to find stone. And this is a little bit unusual. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go in a dolomite. So this is where I'll start building up my fortress. Now, the thing about it, at least the way I've been playing, is you have a trade, uh, a trade center the wagon will come and you don't want you know some people put that underground too I, I keep it up uh, you know either on the first level or second level I have actually put it up on top of the surface just theory being even though it might get attacked it's easier to, re to just build another trade depot <laughs> uh, than it is to have a bunch of dead dwarves on your hands so something to think about it's not really an issue at this stage of the game but, you know, it's a good idea to be thinking about. They might be bringing up stuff, trade goods, all the way up to the top to be able to uh, trade with uh, the depot. Okay, so this is where I really want to start my uh, my operations. Let's get this uh, cleared out nice. I don't know if it's really better to put your bedrooms, you know, where you want those. Deeper seems a little bit better to me than... Uh, real close to the surface. One of the nice things about a bedroom in stone levels is that you can smooth, the dwarves will come and smooth out the walls and they can engrave cool stuff on the walls. And The, the dwarves uh, really enjoy a nice bedroom with uh, engraved walls. <laughs> it's, it's a fancy, it's fancier. If you had to construct the walls, like I could come here and say construct a wall, you can build a I think you can also engrave those, but I don't know. It's just, uh, again, a lot of this game depends on how you want to role play it. You know, there's certain things you could do that don't make a whole lot of sense. Might be uh, efficient in terms of gameplay, but I just, I love the idea of these dwarves having like carved out the mountain and using the stone that was there for their walls instead of, uh, you know, building walls myself. I don't know. Okay, so I got a little bit carved out. You can see I got some gems here, some rough tiger irons. Now, one thing I didn't know about this when I was starting out, I thought you should just carve these out or mine these out every time. But actually, if you leave them in the wall, when they do that smoothing and engraving option I was telling you about, that'll actually be a really cool thing. Uh, so the dwarf that gets the bedroom with this, this uh, these rough hewn tiger iron clusters in the wall will be really happy about that. Makes a pretty wall without having to build anything, really. Okay, now I think I need to get my wood operation going so I can start making some beds. And kind of what I'm envisioning for this is to have a big stockpile of goods like in the middle and then have the, the workshops around it. You know, I saw some designs like that I kind of like, so I'm going to try to emulate that here. But the problem is it's going to take a lot of space to set that up, and I probably won't be able to uh, do it all before they get tired. So what I can do is come in here to my digging operation and, and change the priority. 
just another one of those things I wish I had known when I was starting off. But you could say, you know, this isn't really a top priority here. You know, do that. <laughs> Maybe there's something else I'll put at a higher priority to this. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and start there, I guess. And uh, I'm going to go down. Because I like the uh, keep everything sort of vertically organized. So I want to have the, the beds lower down and some of this construction stuff going on at a top level. <clears throat> I want to keep my carpenter shop in particular. I want that to be a little higher up so they don't have to bring the wood so far down. Alright, this is looking good. Getting a nice column chiseled out. I'm going to go ahead and again put this on like not urgent but at some point I need to get oh, thinking about these bedrooms. I think they're okay sleeping on the ground the first couple of times. Okay, now got him mining out a little bit. Uh, the sand we can we can collect the sand and actually use it in our uh, uh, glass furnaces and make all sorts of cool stuff out of glass. And we got our couple late levels of, I guess this uh, loamy sand. We could put a farm there. Let's go ahead and do the. <clears throat> I'll just put a little farm. I better just wait on this guy. <laughs> uh, this screen, you can specify what you want people to do. And I'll try to get into this as we go along. But you can see he's the only miner right now. I could click everybody and have uh, other miners jump in, but the every character has these skills that they. The more they do this thing, the better they get at. It, right. So he's an adept miner. Eventually he'll be this expert miner and then a master miner and so on. He'll be faster and faster. So that's a consideration. You're always kind of toying with the item or trying to balance out these uh, principles of somebody who's highly specialized, very efficient, very good at it, versus having a, a bunch of people do it, you know, in case that person's tied up. And so do you want kind of generalist dwarves so things get done faster? <laughs> you know, just by the numbers, sure, numbers of people doing it. Or do you want to have more expertise? Uh, certain things, I think, like crafting, if they're making goods or furniture, it really makes sense to have somebody really good at it so they churn out quality items instead of just a whole bunch of items. I got a guy fishing. Uh, the thing that I want to really want to make sure that I specify here is the planter. Uh, you really want somebody who's good at planting <laughs> to plant things. And so when we do get around to making farms, they'll be more productive. I don't think it matters so much the harvesting part. So you could just leave that alone for now. <clears throat> and then with these, these haulers, there's a lot of debate you could read. Some people have a specified hauler who does nothing but hauling. Uh, there is an issue you, you'll see in a minute when people uh, start bringing stuff from the stockpile. You know, you might have this master legendary crafter who you really want to just be working on. You know, keep making those extremely valuable trade goods. <laughs> you know, don't take time out of that to go bring a rock, you know, across the screen. Uh, but there's other ways we can, we, there's other things we can do to specify that. And I probably should have made this a lower priority, but we'll just go ahead and finish carving this and I'm already kind of feeling like I'm wasting some, some time here because the quicker I get those uh, trade goods, you know, I'm waiting too long to make start making the trade goods. And if I don't have, uh, up here I can see the value here. Oh, I don't, I actually don't have a broker yet. <laughs> There's so much to know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you want to have a lot of value as quick as you can so you can attract more migrants and get more dwarves. Okay, I'll let him finish this and then he'll pop up here and We'll make our first uh, workshop, which will be the carpenter. I'm trying to make a little space. It's a little, you know, some people say just just throw the workshop down anywhere. You can always tear it down to build another one later when you get things more set up the way you like it. That's probably good advice. I don't know why I'm not following it. <laughs> it's my game, damn it. If we crash and burn, you can blame me for doing it this way. 
Yeah, you can watch this guy. I just find it kind of uh, relaxing watching these guys work so hard. Getting lots of this dolomite. This will be really useful when we start up our steel production. You're going to have to make a lot of armor and weapons. And you can basically make anything out of iron or steel. And the more valuable the material that you use, you know, the more valuable the item will be, the happier everybody will be about it. I'll wait and let him get that corner pegged out. Okay, now let's go ahead and put a workshop down. I might move it around a little bit later, but we'll we'll put it here. Okay, and then I got these options. You know, I don't have any other workshops going now, so it's going to have to be built out of logs. Now, one of the things you'll find is that you don't want to be building stuff out of logs that you don't have to, because that's one of the things you can't really automate is chopping down trees. So it's, it's already going to be a big enough pain in the, in the tuchus that to keep going up and making sure you got plenty of wood for your furnaces and things. So you probably want to take it easy and just build stuff out of wood that you absolutely have to. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, beds are one of those things. One, two, three, four, five, six, make seven beds. You can only build them out of wood. And let me show you this. So this is the carpenter's workshop, the person that makes all the stuff that you can make out of wood, basically. Now what I can do at this stage is uh, instead of just letting anybody come in here and make beds, I can click this guy and say only let the proficient carpenter do it. That way you know you're going to be getting good beds, you're not going to be wasting the wood on like really crappy beds. <laughs> I guess lots of splinters in them, who knows. Uh, but it will. Uh, he's also chopping wood, right? So he's going to stop making the beds and go up and chop wood. So I could say, no, just just do this. <clears throat> you know, just make stuff in the workshop. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough dwarves yet to really be that uh, particular. So we're just going to have to let him chop the wood and, uh, you know, come down here and make beds. But it'll be okay. So while I got him doing that, I can make another workshop for stonework. And again, I would really rather not put it here. You know, I, I kind of want to have my stockpiles arranged better, but just for the sake of getting some economy going, we'll stick it there. Okay, now he's gonna... We need to start laying down our bedrooms, is what I really want to do here. Now what? You kind of have to think in advance. There's this blueprint option you can use if you want to kind of conceptualize it that way before you commit to things, but you know, I don't like really narrow hallways that just don't look too good. I, so I want to kind of expand that out. So what I'm thinking is the hallway will actually probably not be that big. Probably what I, let me, let me erase this. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So one thing I'm thinking I'll do is have, let me just put this on like seven. So if you really won't do this until later. But you know, I have a three way a hallway that'll be plenty of space and then I can start thinking about where I want to build these uh, these bedrooms so I'm thinking they'll come up the hallway here and then they'll be the first bedroom like there now you could make these two by two really the only thing you want in there is you have to have a bed obviously but that could just be one tile uh, but you probably also want a chest another tile a cabinet another tile and then some of them uh, also want armor stands and weapon stands. So I just, you know, it doesn't really, you're not going to be hurting for space. <laughs> That's for sure. And so it's just kind of a matter of how long do you want to take, you know, to, to carve out the uh, the spaces. So I think a 3x3 three three is a good place to start. Although when you get lazy later on, you can shrink the size of these bedrooms. So they can uh, come up here, sleep, and they're not too far away, you know, you don't want to, if you build it way up here, then they got further to go when they want to get some sleep. Another factor is you want to be thinking about walls in between the bedrooms. So I wouldn't want to put like another bedroom there because then the, there'd be no wall. Some people, they don't care about that. They're just like, you know, just stick a bed in a room, big empty room, bunch of beds, makers, you know, I, I, that, that offends my sensibilities. <laughs> I kind of like to have uh, private bedrooms. I don't know. 
maybe it's uh, just me. Now here's a, another factor. If I put it here, then you can see I've only got like one strip or one like row of wall in between. I'll have to share that wall. Not a big deal, but if it's a valuable wall, you know, you're splitting the value a little bit between those uh, those rooms. They'll both be sharing the value of this wall right here. Again, I haven't, that hasn't been a problem for me. It's been okay. But maybe something to think about. Okay, and then I think I'll start another group of uh, bedrooms down here. Again, let's do the carve it out a little bit like this. And I try to keep things looking good, symmetrical. Now, we might run into a problem with uh, water down here. You know, sometimes you run into water and you really have to, to be careful with that because you could flood your fortress. You probably don't want that. So there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That'll be eight bedrooms for my dwarves. So you should come down here and start carving that out. Okay, he's making beds. Good. And here's another consideration while I'm thinking about it. You see how he's, he's making these beds, but he's just, there's nowhere to go. I haven't made any stockpiles yet. So he's just putting them in his, uh, putting them in his workshop. Now that's fine up to a certain point, but the more stuff he gets in the workshop, apparently that slows him down. It's just like cluttered up, I guess. And so eventually we'll need to, uh, you know, we'll be using these beds pretty much right away. Uh, but ideally, I'd have a, a stockpile for them to keep these uh, beds in so that they don't stick around the workshop cluttering it up. Okay, now we've got our stone cutter, and you can see I have an adequate stone carver I can put in charge of this place. Now, he's a mason, too, so that means uh, he's he's uh, the builder. So I don't want to lock him into where this is the only thing he does because I don't want to get anything built. Okay, let's get him uh, some tasks. Now, one thing you can make is a block. So you take one of these rocks, not a dolomite. Actually, is that all I have is dolomite at this point? I might have to rethink some of my rock settings. Let them use dolomite because I don't think I've got any other kind of rock right now. Yeah, I hate to do it, but let's go ahead and uh, let them use the stones, uh, the dolomite for economic, non economic jobs. Okay. And we'll make some blocks. So what happens is he takes one of these dolomite rocks and he'll make some blocks out of it that he can use for building other uh, workshops. So I think you get like four blocks for one piece of dolomite. So that'll be a nice compromise. Eventually I want him making uh, doors and uh, coffers. I think it's what they call little chests and if you make it out of stone. And so those guys look like they're working hard. So, yeah, so you can see he's, he's, he took that piece of dolomite. Now he's got four dolomite blocks. So if I try to build another workshop, <clears throat> see I want to build a crafting shop down here, I can use uh, those blocks instead. So instead of having to get a, or waste a whole piece of dolomite, I can make four workshops uh, out of those blocks that he just made. Okay, let's go ahead and have him make some um, some doors, I guess. Now, he won't make the doors out of the blocks. That's one of the limitations. They're only good for making constructions, like roads and workshops. Okay, this guy's still making beds. <coughs> All right, got a little space carved out for our first bedroom. So over here I can say bedroom, and you decide how you want to parse it out. Now, when I was doing this the first time, I'd make a bedroom like this, you know, where it's just the inside that made sense to me, right? But you can see it's only nine. If you look at this uh, thing in the corner there, it says bedroom nine tiles. So if I do it this way, it's not going to count the walls as being part of the bedroom. So you say, so what? But the walls, again, have some value, especially if you sculpt them out. And the dwarves are happy if they have a valuable uh, bedroom, right? So if I do it this way, I get the 10 squares. Again, I do have this wall here that will be shared by this bedroom. 
but they just split the difference, so it, it's okay. <coughs> so I'll say accept. So that's my first one now. I can specify who gets the first bedroom. Big pain in the butt. I just let the computer decide. It's automatic. And then we can decide where we want to put the beds. Put it in the center. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so what'll happen? Yeah, he'll come plop the bed down, take it out of that workshop. This is our planter. At this stage, it's probably just important to get everybody a bed to sleep in, because otherwise they'll be eventually get grumpy and start sleeping on the floor. How can you blame them? Another option is to build a dormitory. I think there's an option there somewhere, right? Yeah, the dormitory. So you could just make a big room, stick a whole bunch of beds in it, call it a dorm. Uh, you probably want to do that eventually, especially if you start getting overwhelmed with uh, migrants. You might, you might have new people coming in faster than you can make bedrooms. So it could be the sort of temporary situation until you get you know, things settled in. Of course, other people use dormitories. They don't even bother with bedrooms, at least for their ordin ordinary dwarves. The nobility might justify a better bed. Okay, he's got a couple of doors made. We can stick a door on. There's bedrooms and the doors. Oops, don't put it there. Nope. <laughs> uh, the doors also have value. And you can Decorate these doors. Make them even more valuable. <coughs> All right, he's doing good. He's probably already like a master miner. Yeah, see now he's yeah he's expert miner already. He was only adept a while ago, so that's really leveling up quick. So continue making stuff, sticking down beds, bed bed beds. Keep them in the middle. Now you can see the. Uh, if I go back to, if I hit F1, it goes to this level, and we can adjust the uh, hotkeys here. I think it's under here, settings, uh, key bindings. No, 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 no. It's uh, where is it? Recenter on the deepest discovered area. Recenter on the surface, edit the... Yeah, here we go. So I can uh, actually set this to different levels. So I can have F2. Matter of fact, why don't we go ahead and do that. So I'll make this level uh, F2. Let's see. Recenter on this location. Set this entry to recenter. Yeah, there we go. So now if I hit F1, F2, <clears throat> I don't have to scroll through all those levels I didn't do anything on. Again, not a big deal at this stage of the game, but when you're like 50 levels below, <laughs> you don't want to have to like scroll through 50 levels every time uh, trying to remember where you put that thing. Oh, I got some peat. I've never seen peat before. You know, sometimes when he mines, uh, a stone pops out. Sometimes it just carves through. Now, you might think that has something to do with the ex his expertise as a miner, and it doesn't matter. Doesn't make any difference. The mining skill just is about the speed. Just a random chance whether uh, anything good pops out of there. Oh, I forgot what I was going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, F2. So you notice that some of these beds are made out of different kinds of wood. Like this is a plum wood bed. You notice it's got those minuses. This one's got pluses. So what that means, it has to do with the quality of the bed. If we click it, you see the minus means it's a well-crafted plum wood bed. And we don't have a broker yet. I should probably do that really quickly. As soon as we get these bedrooms set up, I'll go ahead and set up some uh, some of the nobility so you can see what that looks like. These might be these are going to be worth different amounts of cash, right? The, this is finely crafted. So most of these are just well crafted, but I have one that's finely crafted, and then there's levels above that. Now that's a virtue of having this guy who's good at carpentry work making the beds instead of just any random dwarf. 
he just happens to have some time on his hands. Go ahead, make a few more. Now you see these blocks are still here because there's been no real use for them. So they just stay there cluttering it up. Really need to get these stockpiles made. We'll do that in a minute after I get these bedrooms carved out. You know, food is another thing. You know, of course, I have to feed these dwarves. Uh, I found that food, the problem I have with food is always I have way too much of it. And it's just like rotting everywhere. And there's some issues around rotting meat that you don't want. So I don't even, it's not a big priority for me at the moment. I got that guy fishing. So we'll soon have a fisher, fisherman going, making food for everybody. I probably want to put that level, you know, again, I don't want to try to keep the food from getting all over the fortress. There's only so much you can do about it. <laughs> but the more you can sort of keep all the stuff concentrated in one area, the better. Uh, stuff that has to do with food, because you don't want that miasma or the rotten odor. Will have a terrible effect on your dwarf's morale. As you can imagine, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's get our bedroom set up here. Okay, so I think that, you know, we still got to, now why is he messing around down there? Oh, see, gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, so you see this guy, he's already sleeping. Who's this guy? He's our metal crafter. I don't think he's done a whole lot of specialized work. Euphoric due to inebriation. He's annoyed about the lack of chairs. Annoyed that he didn't have a mug. So that gives you little clues as to what you might want to build next. You don't want these dwarves getting too unhappy. See, this? everybody's okay right now. Kind of middling. Once we get them in nice bedrooms and get some uh, tavern set up with some places to eat, they'll be happier. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and make this our meeting area, just a temporary meeting area. So what this will do is get everybody off the surface, so they'll stop getting rained on. Just while I'm thinking about it too, let's go ahead and set up some, uh, some pens for these animals, some pastures. And some animals need to have, they're called grazing, <coughs> grazing animals. So they need some grass, and they'll eventually eat all the grass, and you'll have to come in and move them around. But it looks like I got a couple alpacas here, so I'll pin those together. I haven't, we don't know if this baby, I don't know if we can see if that's a male or female yet. It'd be nice if I had a male and a female, because that way they'll breed. Alpacas. It's about the best name I can come up with at the moment. <laughs> those guys are definitely grazers. Now again, keep in mind, you don't want to go way away from your base here because these guys have to come out and tend to these animals. And ideally, you don't want to be caught, you know, far off on the map somewhere if there's a raid or just random bad stuff that happens. <coughs> so I got my alpacas pinned. Looks like I got a yak. Her. Let's see, what else do I have? Uh, the dogs and cats and the geese, you don't have to pen these. or They don't have to be up here. They're, they're not grazers, so we could put them down with us. The cow's great. Okay, let's do a couple more. What else do we have here? The goat. And we got that donkey donkey. Let me ride that donkey donkey. Unfortunately, donkey riding is not implemented. They can't even pull a damn cart. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. And like I say, these other other animals, you could pin those uh, down here somewhere. Now, the animals are kind of stinky. You know, they'll get little bugs and stuff all, all around where you got them pinned up. So you probably don't want them in the open like this where everybody has to walk past. But just for now, it's fine. <coughs> you know, the other game I was playing, I had all these dogs. I had so many dogs breeding. It was just incredible the amount of dogs running around. So I put, I put them on the menu. 
He's a good source of dog leather, and I mean, they, hey, nobody seen to mind. You don't want to do that with somebody's pet, obviously. Oh, am I out of beds? Oh, okay, yeah, I need to make one more bed. Now, my kind of like Rim World, I think. If you have a few extra bedrooms, that encourages people to come migrate. At least that's my theory. Oh, I got a stray nanny goat. Okay, just go ahead and stick it. Uh... Now there is a, there's something called DF hack you can get that would just go ahead and let me set that bed down even though it's not made yet. You know, it's not considered part of the official game for whatever reason. I'm just gonna I'm just playing with a vanilla version, not doing any any sort of hacks or anything. Okay, we're kind of at a, a point now where we can start dealing with these stockpiles. There's a whole lot of uh, a whole lot you could say about stockpiles. I mean, it's a big part of the game. It's a big part of your supply chain. Um, uh, just by default, it does. Uh, it's like I said, the none. That's kind of interesting. Uh, you could set them to all. You probably don't want that for various reasons. You want to be a little bit more organized. Uh, what I think about is okay. The, the you're gonna get wood. Um. For this wood carpenter, or for the carpenter is going to need wood. This guy's going to need stone. The problem is, do I want it all piled up in one big stockpile, or do I want to have separate stockpiles so I can more sort of easy to visualize what's going on? So what I think makes more sense to me, anyway, is to have like a little pile just for wood. <coughs> I'll make it bigger later on when I get more space, but you know I'll be able to see the logs piling up there. And then I can make a whole different stockpile just for uh, the stone, like this. And I'm going to want to carve this out a little more. Oops. Because I've got lots more stuff I need to build around this area. Looks like I'm still doing okay on food and drink. I want to try to get a crafter going. <clears throat> okay, so these guys are looking good. My next step, I think, will be to create a, uh, a place for them to eat. I guess we could put it up here. Again, the problem is you just... I really have struggled with rotten food everywhere. <laughs> just trying to avoid that problem again if I can. I'll carve that out to about there. You know, I always find you, you hardly ever have a problem of uh, not having enough space. So I just kind of like just to keep things better organized, to space everything out nicely. Let's see, what am I doing here anyway? I think I want to make a dining room. I want to do bigger than that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make this like. This is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five by five. I'm gonna knock that out. Oh, I think I'm a little bit too close, aren't I? Yeah, let's go ahead and clean that. Yes. Detail oriented man. Once you carve it, you cannot you know, once you mine it out, you're committed. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. This is five by seven. Okay, do one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna do one more row to make it seven by seven. That looks good. All right, and this can be our dining room. So for that, we're gonna need some tables, and you can make that out of rock, thank God. Go ahead and make two tables. And then the chairs are called thrones. Make them out of stone. And I guess we probably only need two, but you know, I like to put four or two around each table. Okay, let this run. Okay, let me check on my wood supply. Make sure I got some. There's a couple logs here, but I think we might want to chop down a couple more trees. 
Really got to get started on the fish. We need a fish market. Or I forget what they call it. The place where they clean the fish and cook them. That's probably where most of our food's going to come from. I'd really rather have my food productable. I've only got this one miner. As soon as I get some more uh, migrants, we can add another miner to the mix. I see these other guys running around making a uh, hole in that stone. Got a couple of tiger eyes there. Oh, he's sleeping. Yeah, see, so we spot up the stone here, or the wood over there, the stone over there. Obviously, going to need a bigger pile, but you can see already this is really handy because I can just look there and see that I've got wood. Have <laughs> you got wood? <laughs> you know, otherwise, I have to keep looking up at the top. And plus, this uh, carpenter, when he needs a piece of wood now, he doesn't have to go all the way up to the top and bring down a piece, a log. He just walk right across there and grab it. Wake up. This guy, what is he now? Still an expert. Since he's also a skilled appraiser, so that's kind of unfortunate that my miner is the appraiser. Because he'll, uh, if I make him the uh, broker, he'll have to spend some time in the office doing that. I think that's a broker. I haven't even gotten the nobility yet. I'm still working on this. but <coughs> We'll get to that bridge when we cross it. I got some hematite. You can see that makes iron. See it built into the walls too. I still want to make this. This will be my. Let's see if I got any more doors. I need to make a. <coughs> as soon as this is carved out, I want to make. We'll go back to thinking about those stockpiles again. We got to get our trade depot built. There's so much to do. All right. So here's how you make a dining room. You start off with a meeting area. And then. Uh, well, no, nope, that is not how you do it. That's how you make a tavern, which that's something that's my favorite thing to make. <laughs> uh, there's actually a special thing, dining hall. All right, and you can assign this to individuals, or you can just have it open to the general public, <laughs> which is what I'm doing here. <laughs> and then they need a table. I think we got two of those made. Excellent. And then a couple of chairs. Go ahead and stick. You know, I don't know if they if they even care if you put two two chairs around like that, but uh, it's just the way I like to do it. Now this isn't going to be a fancy dining room at this point. It doesn't even have a door. <laughs> okay, let's make a door at least. Now you notice I'm, I'm having to come up here and like do individual tasks. <clears throat> Very quickly, we'll get to the point where we can just automate that. But to do that, I'm going to need to have... Uh... Actually, I think I can do that now. All right, so nobles and administrators. These are like your, your ruling class and people with extra responsibilities. Now I've got my leader here. I think this guy has meetings that he does, so that'll take a little bit of his time. So you might not want him to be doing uh, multiple things. It's, it's probably better to have... You know, each one of these roles done by a dedicated person. But the manager is really key because that'll make life easier for the player. And you can see only the expedition leaders has any kind of organi organization skills right now. So I could just make him do, do two things. Or I could just say, you know what, just stick, give it to somebody else. You know, eventually they'll learn the skills. So you can try to find, like, who's the least... A relevant person right now. <laughs> uh, we could stick the metal crafter in the position. And it says he's going to need a, uh, <coughs> what is this, a study, I think? Yeah, so he's going to have to spend some time on a study, uh, I guess, calculating the orders. So we can put a study somewhere, or it's an office. So I don't know if he's willing to work at all right now as is. Let's go ahead and figure out where we want to put this <clears throat> maybe a little row of studies. 
And I think we could put it there. This will kind of share a corner. Doesn't look great, but okay. <laughs> oh, don't carve that out. No, 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 no. Yeah, the study probably doesn't need to be as big as a bedroom, but uh, <coughs> sorry about this. Uh, very dry down here for some reason. Let's figure out. Let's put it. Yeah, this, that looks like a good spot down though. Yeah, I think that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Give the guy a study, and he's gonna need a another. He's gonna need a table and a chair for that too. Let's see, the table and a throne. No, I'm thinking about it. Keep making beds. Again, you don't want to make more stuff out of wood than you have to because there's going to be a shortage of wood very soon. <laughs> We're going to have to constantly be thinking about, do we have the wood? Should I chop some more wood? And don't forget, too, we got all this stuff sitting up here on the wagon that's just getting rained on and you know exposed to the elements. We definitely want to get that into a stockpile. But, you know, I've taken my time with it before it. Maybe we'll lose a few things or get, it gets rained on. It's not going to be that big of a deal, but it's uh, something on the mind. All right, for the office, bada boom, same as the bedroom, but we need to assign this to the manager. And like I said, we'll stick. Oh, we don't have the table yet. All right, make that table. Okay, there he goes. You can see all this stuff piling up in his office. Very soon we'll take care of that. Let's see, is he making the... Looks like he's making the throne. And again, with these the stone workers, I think it does matter. I think you'll be more likely to have a really well-crafted table. Well-crafted whatever. It's not just about speed. Dolomite and the table. Oh, we did the table. Chair. <laughs> I know there's hotkeys for this. I just don't have them memorized. Okay, that'll be good. Wait, we didn't get a door on the. There we go. Door. <clears throat> okay. Now, one thing to think about is this, uh, this, this kitchen area. If we put a stockpile of food right here. Uh, they won't have to walk as far. So let's go ahead and carve this out. And we'll put a little stockpile there, just with prepared meals. Alright. I don't even know if we have any prepared meals yet, but we will soon. I'll just make it really... Just, I'm almost just kind of showing you what the where to, you might want to put stuff. You know, we could put that in the, uh, in the kitchen, or in the dining room, I suppose. You know what? But I don't know what that would do. Let's just leave it here. Food. Prepared meals only. Nope, not that. <laughs> yeah, okay, so just put prepared meals here. And you'd want to have a barrel. Yeah, if you make barrels, that's what they put the food in. And instead of just having three tiles here, we could actually have, you know, three barrels here. They could put a whole lot of food just in that little stockpile. But you will need barrels for that. So let's go ahead and do that while I'm thinking about it. Probably better to wait until you have metal so you can make them out of metal. I think you can also make them out of clay. Clay pots. To, <clears throat> or glass. I think you can even make glass uh, barrels. I don't think they call them barrels, but it's the same principle. I could be wrong about that. It's definitely true for the, for the giant pots you can make if you have clay. All right. Let's go ahead and make two barrels, and you can just see what, what happens here. So he'll pop up and make some barrels. Oh, they've already put one here. Good. We might actually already have some good that are good to go. I think that's just an empty barrel. Right, let's check to see how many barrels we have here before we go crazy. I see wine. Meat. He's got a meat barrel there. Now, one of the, the big things you don't want to have is meat that's not in a stockpile. 
That's a, that's something that's urgent, is to get anything that can rot. If you get it into a stockpile, it's okay. If it's just lying around somewhere, it'll rot, and you don't want that. That's a big, big problem. Probably won't hurt that a few extra barrels. In any case, it's also what they use for the, uh, the still. I'm thinking the level below this will be our food production area. Let's go ahead and carve out another row of stairs. Been thinking about that. And unfortunately, we haven't. We need a broker with the appraisal skill. Oh, it is a broker I need. Uh, do I really want my miner taking a break from mining to go do the appraising? Unfortunately, I think we just have to do that. <clears throat> okay, I don't think he needs a. I, I think once you get a big enough base, you'll need an office too. But for now, it doesn't appear that he needs one. So, what I want to see. Yeah, and you can see what things are worth now. So, the cherry wood's worth three. Plus, like, all the wood is just worth the same amount of money. Dolomite's worth six. Lignite's three. So, this dolomite's a, you know, a bit more valuable of a stone than you make a stone. These uh, tiger irons are worth 12. All right, I'm gonna pause it here and get <laughs> get a drink. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. All right, that's better. Got me some peppermint tea here. A little bit of honey, a little bit of a uh, peppermint syrup. Oh, honey's such a wonderful thing. You know, I was just thinking you got honey in this game, uh, and you can use it to make uh, mead with. Which is a lot of fun. You know, if you, uh, I've brewed beer before, and that's kind of involved, but you can also, uh, make mead at home pretty easily. So I think it might even be easier to make mead than, uh, uh than to make beer. You know, so if you just want to dabble at home with some brewing, you might look into making mead. Does it, you can get fancy with it, obviously, but you can also keep it really simple, keep it, uh, keep it basic and <laughs> keep it fun. Okay, let's see. Where were we with this? I think I need to get started on my food production. Alright, so Zasir Zanlaltir has become a stone worker. So you can see now he's an adequate stone cutter, competent stone carver, a proficient mason, so I guess all those have to do with stone, so he's become a stone worker. Kind of is his descriptor now. All right, where what was I? I got some limonite there. That's good for metal ore and also hematite. So we're looking good. Did I get that office assigned yet? Yeah, okay. So let's deal with the food production, and then we'll do a little bit more work on these stockpiles. These guys are just hanging around doing nothing. You know, I can't have that. Let's go ahead and make a... we get the jeweler jeweling. Oh, I, I don't like that. I need more space to work. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I'll be able to reclaim... I guess we could experiment with this, right? So it says... Uh, I got... You know, just for the sake of experiment... So that used a piece of dolomite. Let's see what happens. Let's let him build it and then we'll just tear it down and see if we get our dolomite back. Okay, so dolomite used one dolomite block. Right now if we destroy it... Make sure. Let's see, dolomite. Yep, four dolomite blocks. Let's see if I get my block back. Right. Don't think so. <laughs> Dolomite. So did I just no it's four? So I guess I had five. So that is uh, you know cost me a piece of dolomite that little experiment, but you know it's not that much of a price to pay. I got plenty of dolomite. So you could just say I'm gonna set up some temporary stations here, and then you know once I'm able to get the time to properly carve all this out. Well, let's go ahead and be thinking about where we might want these stockpiles. So I think that'd be a good spot for some gems. And we don't want the uh, 
finished gems here yet. So let's just turn that off and just, just, no, there we go. Just rough gems. So I have a little place. Uh, we'll put the jeweler down here somewhere so I have the, those rough gems you can just go to and collect. And you can be cutting on those. Let's see, where's our miner? Okay, this like we're going to be good to make our kitchen, kitchen area. Let's go ahead and get plenty of room because this is going to be a pretty massive operation once we really get kicking here. Might want a stockpile. Probably even bigger than this. But maybe we could work with this. <clears throat> we'll have a little hallway here. And keep a lot, I like a lot of space for people to work. Okay, that looks okay. You know, I might actually for this. You could put doors there, I suppose, but it might even make more sense since this is where the stockpiles will be here in the middle. Go ahead and make doors there too, so they can run down, get what they need from the stockpile. Let's go ahead and prioritize this a little bit. There we go. I'll just leave that alone. Oops. One. This isn't going to be too pretty to start off with, but we'll get the job done. There we go. So let him carve this out, then we'll make the fish station. So I'm going to need a kitchen. There's a lot of stuff about kitchens I need to explain. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way. <coughs> Last of dry throat. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, let's see. Uh, farming, let's do the uh, fishery. Yeah, the fishery. Yeah, let's continue using these blocks. Oh, I haven't even talked about the management. What am I doing here? Okay, so what we can do now that we have a manager, we can give work orders. So instead of having to individually click, make a block, make a block, make a block, you could say, give me rock blocks. You can make 10 of them, boom. Or we can even go in here and basically program this. So you could say, make 10 blocks every day. Or every year. You can do it time-based. Or we could say, if we got less than 10 blocks, so this is any type of rock, we could get a little more specific here and just say, if it's dolomite, do it, or blah, blah, blah. But we'll just stick with this. So and if we don't have uh, any rock blocks, or if we have less than 10 of any kind of rock block, <clears throat> then make <coughs> 10 rock blocks. We could end up with like 19 or 20. Uh, or you could say don't only do it if we have at least 10 non-economic hard rock. Because if you don't do this properly, you'll keep getting these little pings. Of, oh, we don't have enough rock. Oh, we don't have... You get kind of overwhelmed with the messages. You could even bump this up and say, look, don't even do this unless we have like 20 of these rocks. Uh, but this will keep us in uh, rock blocks so we have plenty to build things with. And then we could go in there and say the same thing for chairs. And Why don't we uh, go ahead and set this up the way we want it. So I think doors are something else we're going to want a constant supply of. Same uh, parameters there, 10 doors. They like 10. 10. What else do we want? Chairs and then uh, tables. <clears throat> Same thing with these. Two, ten of each. And then uh, let's see, do we get what do we have here? Door, chairs, tables. Well, we don't need ten tables, but it's okay. You know, one of the if you notice that condition was if you have less than nine, make ten. And it checks it every day, so you're able to make 10 tables a day. So you can end up with a whole bunch more tables than you need. Better to have too many than not enough, I say. And then I'm also going to want a some cabinets and coffers and coffins. But let's do the coffers. These are little chests. Yeah, there we go. You can specify the material. You see that? So you can say, only make them out of blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe your most valuable material. Well, I'm not going to be that picky. I kind of like the randomness. So if I've got less than 10 empty rock coffers, then make 10 more rock coffers. 
and we can put those in every bedroom is going to want one. And then finally, the cabinets. Oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we can. It's a good idea at this point to figure out what priorities we want on stuff. So, what's the most important thing you want? Probably the coffers are more important than tables. So put tables last and bump down the chairs. <coughs> see how do I do this? All right. Yeah, doors. You don't want no thrones. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, put thrones down by the tables. You know, this I wish was better done. This is kind of hard for me to see what's going on. And then bump up coffers. Okay, so yeah. Door first, then a coffer, then a cabinet, then a throne, then a table. Okay. And then over here we can do the same thing for beds. Okay. And then you gotta make sure you got enough logs so we can avoid those pesky error messages. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we could put more logs. And I'm going to make all this bigger eventually. <coughs> I'm going to need a place to put my bars of stone and the stuff that he's making up there, all those coffers and things. Just make a little stockpile for the, the blocks for now. They shouldn't need to be too big because they could use the... Uh, he will be able to use those... Uh, Yeah. Oh, they can use uh, bins. So let's see, do I have any bins created? Yeah, it wants to put three bins there. Let's go ahead and make a couple of bins. This will use up my wood, but it'll save <clears throat> some space in the long run. <coughs> Hopefully they'll get a couple of those made before they start filling this place up. With... Whoa, crap. <laughs> so you see what they did? They... Fill that up already before I can get my bins made. So that's okay. I don't think they'll replace a block with a bin. So I'll tell you what, let's just destroy this. Oops. I'll view stockpile. Destroy it. Let's make a different one. <clears throat> None. Let's say we want some bins there. Okay, you should run over there and put some bins in. Yeah, there we go. Oh, this must have bins on it as well. Let's make sure we're not putting too many bins there yet. Actually, one's okay for now. I want the bins here. Really and truly, maybe that one bin would be enough. Yeah, let's just uh, make it just that one little thing from there. We'll put the rock blocks in there. <laughs> okay, now we can say bars of stone, or blocks of stone, I should say. There we go. So now they should fill that up with these blocks. There you go. <clears throat> so that'll be nice and compact. Okay, and then he's made. Now we can't do that, I think, for the furniture. I don't think you could put furniture in a bin. I think it's too big. So that'll have to be. Uh, we'll have to have more space when we get to that part. Let's go ahead and shrink this a little bit too. We don't need that that big of a thing for the gym since we have these nice bins here. I think three bins would be good for that. Let's make one more bin just so we have that situated. Okay, now we have our fish set up. Now, this is what I was talking about with the rotten foods. <laughs> so, we got to watch this thing like a hawk. You see there's a, some pond turtles there. Uh, if they don't take cart this food away, you know, it'll rot right here in the shop, and then we'll have miasma on our hands, and that's, a, that's, that's bad. So we got to try to get this into a proper bin, or a proper stockpile. <coughs> And 
then these uh, pond turtle shells are garbage. But we can actually make some cool crafts so that we can decorate things with shell. So we don't necessarily want to haul it off, but it's not really garbage per se. I don't think we've got a craft shop set up yet, so it's kind of a moot point. But I just want to get some food production going here before we do anything else. Okay, and then we have that little workshop space over there. We can put a... Uh, so farming. You know, I might want to go ahead and get started on alcohol production. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that going. You do not want to run out of booze. <laughs> Better to run out of food than to run out of booze. <laughs> <coughs> These uh, fish guys are automatic. Yes, okay, so he's taking that pond turtle. He should cook that. Alright, now here's... This will take a little bit of explaining. So you can make drinks out of various things, just like in real life. You could make it out of fruit, probably the best. You could make it out of different kinds of plants, like barley, I guess, or you know, things that are aren't edible. It's barely edible. You know what I'm saying. It's not a fruit. It's a grass. <laughs> uh, or extract from plants. I never mess with this one. Or my favorite, which is make mead, uh, which we can't do yet. But this will make a difference if you want wine or beer. You know, there's all kinds of different drinks they can make. Let me just go ahead and we'll set this up and say if you have, again, less than 10 drinks. Now this uh, business with the seeds, you might wonder what's that? what that's doing here. Something I wish I had known when I started this is if you cook food, any seeds in it get destroyed. So that's a big problem if you're just starting off and you don't have any seeds. But the way you get more seeds is counterintuitive. The way you get more seeds is by brewing with it or basically doing anything else. And if they eat it raw, you make seeds. Uh, basically anything but cooking it in the kitchen will give you more seeds. Uh, so if you see you're running low on seeds, uh, you might want to think about pumping up the, uh, you know, processing the plants, processing the, the stuff more. <clears throat> All right, so if we have less than 10 drinks, it says it's not satisfied. So we actually have 30 up here, it looks like. Uh, let's see, but if you got more than 10 unrotten fermentable leaves and fruit, uh, then that'll qualify. And then we want to say if you need to have uh, storage items to put it in. <laughs> I can pile here for the brewer. Just say food and let's not put... Actually, what they put in there will say, don't put prepared food, don't put fish. I'm trying to get down to just like the... Well, I guess we could do it this way. Let's say, for now, all plants and all fruits. I'll see what they do with that. And then, oh crap, we need to specify the... Okay, this is another one for barrels. Alright, so just... None for now. Get some barrels in there. Nine barrels. And then we put fill that up with fruits. We're going to need a kitchen stat. Is this a fish coming out of here? Go ahead and do that. So if I put, I'm pretty sure this is going to be barrels too, so I'm just going to skip that step. Give me some barrels there. You know, that's probably too much for just starting off. Let's just do like three. And again over here, just do three barrels. <clears throat> So I've got plenty of wood up there still. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure that this guy, yeah, he's on five. All right, he carved out a little spot there. We could put our some of our stone productions. Try to make this will need to be massive eventually, but I could do this for now. Now, I think a door <coughs> is considered furniture. Yeah, so doors go in there. Not coffins. Cabinets. 
What else is he making? Uh, da, 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 tables, thrones. I thought we had something else he was working on. You don't really have to be this granular, but I just I like to stay organized while I can. Because <laughs> it won't be long before this is just total chaos. And I bet you if I click on this. Yeah, see, so nothing, no, none of these containers will work. Now, I forgot about the wheel barrels. Those are really nice. You want, they say, I think it's recommended to have three for these. Yeah, that's... The trouble is, they, they, they keep running, they'll, they'll fill this up before I can get the wheel barrels in there. So, what I need to do actually, I see one spot there. Let's make a, a couple of wheelbarrows, <laughs> and you can see what they do. I want to make? No, I'll just make ten. I'm gonna need these. <clears throat> Go ahead and bump that up too. Prioritize it. Get rid of this stockpile for now. Make another one. Go ahead and make it nice, and big. Let's say none, but give me. Three wheelbarrows, because the stones are the heaviest thing they'll be lugging around. So that you really want a wheelbarrow. And you'll see what they do once they get them over there. I don't think gems are that big a deal. I don't think it's that heavy. Okay, so there's a wheelbarrow made. I think I said I wanted three of those. Let's see if he does all oh, three. You can give me one more. <clears throat> You'll see how big of a difference it makes. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, he's probably going out. Somebody's going and filling this thing up. What? Where'd he go? Probably asleep. See, this is what I'm talking about with the interface still needing some work. Like, why can't I just click here and see where this guy is? Or see his uh, character sheet? I mean, that'd be a simple thing to program in. To just make a little link there. <coughs> Instead, you gotta like dig through these menus here and find them. It's not so bad since there's only like seven dwarves at the moment, but you can imagine once you get like 200 dwarves, that's a big pain. He's still not bringing that wheelbarrow over there. I see one made. I guess somebody just needs to bring it over. Come on. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> okay, there we go. So now I got a full three wheelbarrows. I can say, okay, let's go to stone. And they should run over there, get the wheelbarrow, and bring use them to cart the stones. Something happened. So it's so fast you can barely follow it, but you see what they're doing? See if they use the wheelbarrow, they move really quick. They don't have to like slowly lug the stone over. It's much nicer. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, I should probably do this a little bit neater than that, so I can just get some room to walk around. I don't know if it matters if they walk over a tile with something in it. Okay. <clears throat> Man, I need some more migrants already. Yeah, you see he's already creating masterpieces. Cherry wood bin, chestnut bed, so... He's a really good carpenter already. And my cow has grown up. Getting all kinds of gems. Well, let's see. Yeah, we could do our gem manufacturer. Get that going. Uh, da, 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 jeweler is what it's called. Stick that. Use our blocks. Now the jewelers uh, are really cool because they cut those rough gems into nice gems. And you could just sell those and, and make some money. Or you can uh, use them to decorate things. This guy is a competent gem cutter and adequate gem setter. Awesome. Look at that name. That's our manager. What else is this guy doing? 
Oh, this is that metal crafter guy. So we don't have metal crafting yet, so we're kind of abusing this guy's talents, having him just work on gems, but that's okay. So we can cut these gems. And again, you could say if you got... I don't think we have any large gems yet. So if you got more than 10 uh, rough gems, and we can check that here. Rough gems are 20. So that'll check. You can see that's why it said uh, satisfied for next check. So we do, in fact, have more than 10. So uh, when he gets around to this, he'll cut 10 of those. So then we'll have cut gems. And we can use those for some... As a matter of fact, I guess I could just combine these. Not really sure why I wanted to separate those. Needs, uh, one more bin. Why not... Maybe they don't put another bin down unless this one's got something in it. Now one problem I have run into, like you can see with these wheelbarrows, <clears throat> they want, it's, it's hard to get them sometimes to get the barrels and stuff out of the workshops. I haven't figured out how to do that unless they're actually using them. As you see, they're using those wheelbarrows though. Yeah, I guess you could put a wheelbarrow over here. I don't think food is really heavy. Probably wouldn't hurt to have a wheelbarrow in these. Which one is this? What do we make this for? <laughs> I've already forgotten. <laughs> oh, those are unprepared fish. You know, you could put all fish in there. It doesn't really matter to have raw. And... Okay, yeah, four barrels. What's this one? Three barrels and a wheelbarrow. I forgot what I was going to put in there. Oh, I think this one was the... Okay, let's, let's, let's let those wheelbarrows get in there first. And then we'll figure out what to do with those dock piles. There's another one probably wouldn't hurt to have a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrows really speed up the hauling, is the reason I'm kind of fixating on those. Okay. All right, there's the wheelbarrows now. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> I think we want everything but prepared meals here. And then over here, oops, let me fix this a little bit. Okay, a fish, no, no. <laughs> we don't have the, any of these yet. Plants, no. Seeds, no. Fruits, no. It's probably good enough for Yeah, okay, so that'll be that. And then over here is where I want to do the, the stuff for the distillery. So he will want his fruits. And I don't know if any of these, these might not even be the stuff you can make. Uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to have, leave it here. We can always get more granular later. Okay, but we're going to need to build a kitchen so we can start making those meals. But we don't have any prepared meals. No, nope. yep, none. So we need to get a kitchen going here. Get a bitchin' kitchen. Okay, so you might, you know, I kind of like to do it this way. So if you want to expand later, you have some, some options. You know, sometimes you might want to have two or three kitchens going, you know, depending on how many dwarves you have. Uh, but again, my problem is always too much food rotting than it is not enough food. But I don't want to take any chances. We haven't even made our tavern yet. Food stockpile. Did I put... 
Yeah, I guess we might as well give them a place to put the drinks. Make sure this guy's got plenty of barrels in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, it's nice and slow right now because we've only got these seven dwarves, but once it gets to be like 200, this place is going to be hot, going to be buzzing. So there you can see he's got a fish barrel with two lungfish in it, and we got all these pond turtles, and there's one empty barrel, and then there's just a random piece of dolomite. I guess in my stone, yep, it's already full. See, you can't put the stone in boxes or anything. It's too big. I wish I had more than one wheelbarrow in there, though. That's a pain. Yeah, let's make this a little bit bigger. Just gradually expanding as we get more room. Alright, so when this guy gets enough of these gems cut, we can start decorating with it. So you can Encrust finished goods, so things you make as crafts, basically. You can put gems in those, or you can put them in the furniture. Uh, both uh, seem like pretty good options to me. We probably want to do the finished goods first, because that's probably what I'm going to be trading. Alright, so I'm thinking, next to this fish guy, he's going to have all the all the time. So up here, I could put a craft store, or crafter, and just have them do uh, shell crafts. Because <clears throat> I'm going to have basically all the shells you could ever want. <laughs> and while they're working on that, let's stick a kitchen. Uh, now, the kitchen doesn't need any charcoal. That's cool, I suppose. It's, I think it would need an oven going, but okay. Then we can start making some prepared meals. There we go. Now here's, we're going to have to pause here and talk a little bit about what's going on. So these uh, meals require different levels or different numbers of ingredients. Uh, the fat rendering is automatic unless you don't auto automate it, which we probably will at some point because we want to have some soap. Uh, or some uh, fat to make soap with. But we can do this and say if you have less than 10 mils, and then we can get into these ingredients, solid items, unrotten items. Okay, do that right. All right, so if you got all this stuff and it's all satisfied, see? So we're going to start making these right away. Before you do... <laughs> Click on Labor Kitchen, and we need to uh, adjust this. So you don't want them cooking with your plump helmets, because you uh, need those seeds. You don't want them cooking with any kind of seed. Drinks are okay. Any kind of uh, meat and fish is okay. Now, I don't even know if we got our farming started yet. So we can start a little farm. <coughs> and again, you don't need to. You don't need a massive farm. Especially at this point, you'll just end up overwhelming everybody with way too much food. Okay, so he's already got that dug out. We don't have any fertilizer we can make yet. Let's do the plump helmets are great because you can eat them or you can make uh, beer with them. Uh, pigtails are great because you can make cloth and uh, paper. The dimple cups are for making dyes. You know, we probably don't need those. That's kind of a luxury item. Let's see, sweet pods. I think the quarry bushes are only good for food. I'm not sure if sweet pods, what the... I guess you could do that just to have a little variety, but let's just stick with the plump helmets. So you can see how we're kind of varying this up a little bit. <coughs> you won't need clothes for a while. When you do. I'm going to hope you have a lot of pigtails stored up. He's still working on that stuff, pile. 
So we should be gradually uh, cutting some of these gems out. Let's see if we're satisfied with that. Okay, so we've already got more than 10 of these rough gems, so we can start decorating. And you could say uh, crushed furniture would cut gems, and again, I don't want to get besieged by error messages, so only if those things are, are cut. Now, this is interesting. So it says, uh, it's got to be more than 10 greater cut gems. So that's not satisfied because we told him just to do the 10. So what we need to do is lower that by one and then we'll start working. Or you could, you know, lower it all the way down to whatever you want. We don't want to get carried away. That's something that uh, baffled me the first few times. Is it didn't occur to me that they're only making 10, so that's never going to be satisfied. Now you can see he's, he brought in this wheelbarrow and he crushed it with gems. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, because you need a wheelbarrow that's just all studded out. Yeah, this is a very quality chestnut wheelbarrow. The object menaces with spikes of finely crafted green chain. Oh man, Monty Don, this is a. Uh, here's your wheelbarrow, buddy! Hey. So we're humming along. Let's see what else we might want to do at this point. I don't think we ever made a stockpile for our beds. Why is that? Nothing's over here. What is this? Oh, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Oh well, I guess it doesn't really matter. They're gonna bring a bunch of junk over there. <clears throat> what might we want next to this stone guy? Furniture lines. Let's see, we could say only stone stuff. No, oh, no, no. Why can't I click this? Okay, any kind of stone. What am I? I'm really confused. Oh, furniture made out of stone. Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, yeah, so if it's made out of stone. I don't know why clay is also selected. But if I'm right, that should start filling up with like bookcases and cabinets and stuff. And then we'll do one over here. And after this, furniture made out of wood. And that should cover those beds, right? Yeah, we should take the beds out, put them over there. Oh, good, I got some migrants. <laughs> so now we're cooking. So I got another metal crafter, a couple of weaponsmiths, and a peasant, and another woodcutter. Now, this is again where I would love to be able to easily see <clears throat> what I got. Maybe there's a screen here somewhere that I'm just missing that give me like a breakdown on all my skills across my community. I'm just looking around. I don't <laughs> if, there, if there is, I don't know where it is. But like, I would like to be able to see at a glance if any of these guys are like legendary or really good. But this is the best I can come up with is having to click them each one. So I see some adequates. <clears throat> adequate. <coughs> just adequate. None of these guys are really all that impressive. I actually like the peasants because they're kind of fresh. You could do whatever you want to with them. And we will need to make some more bedrooms for these guys. And let's see, I think I saw one was a... Yeah, so this guy's a weaponsmith, which I don't really need right away. But he's got some fish skills. I, I don't think... That that does anything but sp I don't think you have like a get any kind of bonus for being really uh, great at fish dissecting. <laughs> could be wrong about that. I guess we could try it out and see. But you might want to just leave this open because I'm not really in that big of a hurry for fish cleaning. Now oh, what the hell? So you gone from weapons to that. 
fish cleaning. <clears throat> Looking for good dwarf. Must be able to cook, clean, and what is it? So clean fish and something. Must have anvil. Please send picture of anvil. <laughs> Clean fish, cook so and clean fish. You guys probably don't even know what I'm talking. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, looks like everybody's doing good. Down to ten drinks. Oh, we can't have that. Let's see what's going on with this. We don't have enough leaves. <clears throat> He's got enough plants. Okay, we're going to need to keep an eye on that, though. All right. Just about got this cleaned out. You know, I don't know if I necessarily need, now that I kind of got that barrel situation figured out, I don't really need a massive... Just keep an eye on these stockpiles. If we see them uh, stacking up more stuff, you know, then we'll know that we need to uh, increase the size of those. <clears throat> okay. Y'all notice this guy's they're not getting the beds out of his workshop for some reason. They're trying to figure out why they're not bringing it to this workshop. So let's see other materials. Do I need to just specify this? Get the beds out of there. What are these guys doing? Why aren't they getting my beds out? <clears throat> this is like one of those things. I, I don't know why. Let me make sure everybody can haul. Yes. All right, furniture stockpile. It's not take stuff from anywhere let's see furniture siege ammo yes type beds that is a bed <laughs> okay I, I don't know let's we'll check back later and see if they're finally figured it out you know, it also looks like these uh, guys brought in some more, uh, some more animals. What did I see? I thought I saw a turkey. Yeah, there's a turkey there. <clears throat> this is bugging me. I don't know why they're not bringing, they're getting the, the beds out of here. I see the beds. <laughs> Is a bed not a bed? Is that like a glitch? What? what? Okay, furniture. It's not a finished good. It's definitely a... Uh, let's see, type. Well, let's just stick something else in here and see if we can get some action. What about if we said tables are okay? Let's see, if they move the tables... He's got some. Yeah, he's got tables in there. Oh, he's he got a stone out of there. What in the name of God? Maybe they don't want to move it until it gets completely full. <clears throat> yeah, for whatever reason, they are just determined not to bring any tables over there. It must be. I must have set it up wrong somehow. Okay, let me just uh, stop here. May I might have to reset the game. I don't. If I'm reading this right, anything made out of stone or clay should move over there, but maybe I'm not looking at it right. Let me try to move those thrones in there. <laughs> Come on. Please cooperate with me. 
Doesn't seem to want to move that furniture. <clears throat> Hang on, I'm gonna research this and see what I can find out. Well, I saw a thing that said it might be the stones. Hidden stone could be the problem. So let's just see what happens if we remove those stones. Let's see. Okay, so beds. Now let's take out these this first row. Oops. Now, if I erase that and they start filling up with beds, we'll know. Don't see anybody doing anything yet. This is a. I don't know what this. What's causing this glitch here? Furniture. Beds. Well, well, let's remove it and try and make a new one. Please delete. Try it again. Okay. <clears throat> I think they just are determined not to. There's no stairways or anything in between blocking them. Alright, I guess I'm just going to have to give up on that. I don't know what the... Just one of those bugs. And just to rule everything out, I'm going to restart the game. I'll be right back. Alright, so I restarted. Let's see if that makes any difference. Just not, I'm not sure if it's... I, have a, I can't completely rule out some kind of weird user error. Because... <laughs> Surely a bed. I don't. Furniture type beds. I just. I don't know what else it could be. Unless. Do I have to have these selected as well? Yeah, maybe that's the deal. Let's try type and wood and see. The rest of this, I don't. Don't know how much I can specify. You know, the only other possibility I can think of is this guy with his order to do the gems. Maybe he's uh, got him locked up somehow because of that. So let's try taking that command away. So that should have cleared the furniture. Well, I'm about ready just to say, put everything in the stockpile. All right, let's just try this all. Now they're putting stuff in there. What the? What the hell? <laughs> Shit. That makes... Okay, now I'm even more confused. Like, why did that... Look, put a bed in there. Furniture, other materials. What am I doing wrong here? Let's turn all of this on. Let's say beds. Oh, he's got some. There we go. Okay, I think I see the problem. Vern and we're going, even after <laughs> hundreds of hours of gameplay. Alright, so what was the deal? So we need to say, I guess when you check those off, but I had the wood selected. Okay, I guess we solved that problem. I'm not going to complain too much about it. Okay, Every type, if it's made out of stone, any quality. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, that's what it is. So it was uh, considering those other things negatives. Then let me put it in there. Okay, problem solved. Yay! <laughs> Moving on, let's see. While I was doing that, the world was destroyed. And <laughs> all the dwarves starved to death. 
You know that wheelbarrow there is. I shouldn't have put that there. We're not full yet. I'm not sure how much these uh, these barrels can hold. We do need to make some more bedrooms though for these guys if they're gonna start getting complaining on me. I think I wanted to open that up some more. Ooh, I see some gems there. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, what do I need to do for that? There we go. Nice. Yep, I think that's actually too far down. There we go. There we go. Let's make a couple there. Same thing over here. This is very soothing. Very soothing. It's like a big old box of bubble wrap you're popping. I get that all lined up just perfectly. Might as well make a couple up here too. All right, so we've got our tables. That's okay. Somewhere here we just need to have a big, there we go. Just a big old thing of food. Need some more barrels though. This is, it's like a, oh, we got this one somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> Man, I wish I could clear this, whatever this throat issue is. It's driving me crazy. All right, I think we need to make... Hmm, all right, what do we got here? I don't really need a butcher yet. Got her still running. We don't need a tanner yet. We got a kitchen. A farmer, I think, is probably what we want to do next. Yes, use the blocks. And we're also going to want that... We either make a windmill and have a powered quern, but again, I just I've never had an issue with not enough food, so I don't want to get overwhelmed with seeds. Let's just make the regular quern, pump it up, <clears throat> and this is what they used to make flour and things with. Now we're going to have to start thinking about how we're going to make bags, and that's going to require cloth. We've only got those five cloths at the moment. Let's see how we're doing on pigtail. Uh, the only thing we have is pigtail seeds at the moment. He's still making plump helmets. You know, I might make another little farm here just for the see how many pigtails we can get. Because that is going to be a big issue. We need those bags. Jeweler going. Let me turn back on his encrust now that we know what the problem was. Same thing there. Wait, I'm out of. Okay, we probably should find some more gems. And then down here we've got beds being made. He's working on a farmer. Okay, the farmer. <coughs> Again, we can process things. We need bags. Uh, that makes like bags of flour, for example, and also produces seeds. Uh, we could process plants in the barrels for syrup. Uh, let's try that. Of course, we will need to have uh, empty barrels or clay pots once we get that industry going. Let's see, milk animal. Do we have any animals? I think we got some we can milk, right? Yep, yeah, there's a cow. That's a milker. I think uh, alpaca, I won't say you can milk. I think you can milk the yak cow and the donkey. So we've got four things we can milk. And let's say we got a stray reindeer calf. <laughs> You're going to be rocking like uh, Santa Claus here. Might as well stick that uh, reindeer here somewhere. I don't think I've ever had reindeer. Okay. Yeah, we go ahead and put the glass, the glass person here, but we don't have the, uh, we'll have to have charcoal for this to work. All right. Okay. So we've got five things we can milk. Now this is where you tend to generate a lot of errors. So we've only got five things. 
that we can do. We don't want to do it every day. It really only starts, uh, I think you can milk them once a month, I'm wanting to say. So you just want to say, do that five times every month. Should cover everything. And that'll give us, we're going to have to have buckets to do that. So we might get error messages about not having enough buckets. I don't think anything here can be... I think the alpacas actually can be sheared. You can only do that once a year. Let's go ahead and add it to the list though. Sheer animal <laughs> once a year. You might be able to do it more than once a year. I don't know. I'll try that straight off with. Yeah, see I'm already getting all these error messages about <clears throat> not enough uh, fermentable plants. Let's just do a quick check to see how many plants we have. None. Okay. So now it is time to gather some plants. Let's grab a random selection. It's not the neatest way to do it, but hopefully they'll bring back something we can ferment or eat, as the case may be. Okay, so I'm thinking uh, up here actually is where I also want to create my first furnace. Because I want it to be next to the wood pile. And this will just be a wood furnace. And we'll just leave it out in the open close to that wood pile. And then we can start making charcoal and, and ash so we can make some fertilizer. Still working. How's our bedrooms coming? Yeah, just to keep an eye on these contractors. They're always trying to use inferior materials. <laughs> wow, see? <laughs> 35. You see what I'm saying about the food? I mean, it just quickly goes insane. Get insane amounts of food going. 11, 12 roasts. I mean, why do I have 200 prepared meals? What in the name of God are you doing? Prepare a lavish meal. So I'm, I'm guessing when you say make 10 meals, he doesn't just make 10 meals. <laughs> I guess this makes a lot more meals than 10. Some For some reason, he's made... Hang on. Right, so from what I can read here, it says the stack size of the finished prepared meal is the sum of the stack sizes of its ingredients. So a cook grabbing turkey egg in 14, 15, and five resort to the stack of plump helmet stew 24. Now what does that mean? Is that does that mean I have twenty uh, see, there's still stuff about this game I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so it says muscle roast, muscle roast 12. This is a stack of 12 muscle roasts. So that, to me, sounds like 12 meals. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I need to cut way back on the count here. Unrotten prepared meals is less than 10. Well, he should have stopped there. I don't know why he's still cooking. Amount of unrotten prepared meals is less than 10. Yeah, so what is your deal? Why are you still cooking? Oh, I guess when you make 10 meals, you're... I told him to make 10 of these things, and each one is like 10, so that's why there's so many. Okay, so that ought to be more reasonable. So make one meal. <laughs> okay, so that should help with that problem before we get overwhelmed again with food. <clears throat> and that was a problem. That was probably the problem I was having before and just didn't realize it. Making those meals, you make a lot more. You think you're making 10 meals, but you're really making like 100 meals. Okay, that. 
That's a little bit clearer now. <coughs> okay, we need to start making charcoal. And we need ash to make potash, which is our fertilizer. Get him on that. I think this is another job where all it is, you put somebody good in there, it just makes it a little faster, but doesn't really, uh, not really a huge thing. We've got plenty of logs. Okay, so that should start. Yeah, there we go. Making charcoal and ash. Now the charcoal, put a little bit here. I think that's considered a bar of the materials coal. And yeah, one bin. Don't have any extra empty bins. Yeah, I should be able to whip one out before that charcoal gets made and get it up here. Give me the bin. There we go. Perfection. So they'll put some charcoal in that for me. And then we can start doing a Oh, I forgot. We don't have bags yet. Shoot. This probably isn't going to let us... We got a few empty bags. Let's just see. We could start collecting some sand. I know those use bags. I don't know how much you could fit into a bag before to start complaining. Unrotten cookable item. Unrotten cookable item. I think we got our other... Thing here. Let's just load up on pigtails and plump helmets. We're going to need those bags very quickly. Okay, he's already making some charcoal goods, some ash. Now, to do anything with the ash, <clears throat> we have to. We could probably put that up here, actually. Carve out a little bit of this. Be right next door. We can put the potash maker there. Alright, everybody's looking good down here. Okay. Out of gems. That's why that stopped. This is, uh, not sure why that stopped. Okay, the charcoal and the ash. Yeah, we're gonna want the, the ash over here too, right? So let's put another little stockpile here. Uh, let's see, wooden barrel. I, no, I think it's a bin. Well, let's just see what it says. Okay. And a bar. <clears throat> Of ash. Oops. None. None but ash. This guy will be the truck. Okay. I think that'll work. See when they can get a bin in there quick enough. Do I have any extra bins? Oh, you know, I think I'm already out of bins. This needs to be bigger. Okay. I was really hoping I could... Oh, they already stuck a stupid piece of ash in here. It's okay, though. We'll use it up soon enough once we get this ashery going. Yeah, this guy needs a barrel. Might as well use a fancy barrel. <laughs> and a bucket. Oh, I forgot about the buckets. Jeez, there's so much we need to do. <clears throat> this guy looks like he can collect sand in this, this bag here. Let me make another little stockpile. There, just for the sand. And this one is tricky. Sand, I think, is... Uh, I think it's considered furniture. Sandbags. Let's see if they move into that. 
See if anybody comes along and picks up this sandbag. Uh, not sure what they're doing with that. Some furniture. Oh, I gotta do this business again. <coughs> Move the sandbags in there. I don't care about quality. Let's right, we'll see if they move it in there again. <coughs> you gonna put that bag in there? Or you put a bag of sand in there? Okay, that <laughs> works for me. <laughs> okay, you got green glass, clear glass, and crystal glass. No, I don't think it matters too much. I guess it's more valuable to have clear or crystal, but they require some additional ingredients that we don't have right now. But the green glass, we're okay just for sand. So the box is the same thing as a bin. I think there is a... The jugs, I think, are good. For, and the pots, I think, can be made watertight. So you don't have to keep making barrels and, uh, and buckets. And mugs and things of that sort. Let's go ahead and get this little industry going then. So we'll say make jugs. If we're out of jugs. Oh wait, this is clear glass crap. We need to do the uh, green glass. <clears throat> Let's see, green glass. Hang on a second. I kept hearing this weird sound upstairs. I don't know what it is. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's see where we're we with this. Uh, the green glass, all you need is sand. Uh, a portal is a door made out of glass. Uh, and let's see. I want to, uh, to make the watertight stuff. The jugs and the um, goblets, I guess, yeah, for drinking when we make our tavern. Uh, let's see what else the pots green glass pots and I think these pots can be used to store food and we'll do this business with each one of those da, da, da. okay sand bearing items greater than 10 let's bump that down to 9 both of them down to 9 Same thing with the goblets. And then what else? The pots. These are good looking pots too. Alright, that looks good. And then we need to make sure we're always collecting enough sand. Now the sand is a hard to get this done right. I'm never quite sure how to do this. Let's see. Add a condition. And it's called sand. Sand bearing items. Alright, so collect sand. Like that. Okay, amount of sand bearing. If we have not we have less than 10 sand bearing items collect more sand and this is going to collect 10 sands <laughs> so you can, see, you can see the issue there so let's see if it, more than if we have less than 10 collect 10 more yeah, I think that's what we want right I guess we can come back later and check see if that's doing what we intended to do all right, so he should be making jugs and all kinds of good stuff we're going to need for our tavern when we get it up and running. This guy, we, we haven't started to process any plants because for that we're going to need bags. We can do the barrel option now. You know, this is going to use up our barrels real quick. Let's just do one and we'll see what happens. So let's just try to do the... Uh, is that the right one? No, no. Now let's just try this once and see what they do. We can study it. See if we want that done ten times. 
What have we been playing? About two hours? Yeah, we're not even close. <laughs> this is like the early stages. Yeah, so it still says we don't have enough. Oh, wait. Needs unwrought and processable to burial plants. So we don't have the right kind of plants to do that. Let's just try the default option. I think this goes to a bag. So he took some hemp. And let's see what he makes of this hemp. Probably some type of uh, something suitable to make clothes with, I would assume. Or maybe paper. He's got seeds, so hemp seeds and some hemp thread. And then we could uh, spin that thread if we wanted to. <clears throat> that might be automatic. Let's see if he's if he's going. No, he's uh, spinning that wool. So the hemp thread, I think that might you might need a loom to deal with that. I think the uh, the farmer's thread that he spins or she spins, I think that's only for the uh, wool. Uh, maybe silk too. Might be the uh, we need a loom to do the hemp thread. All right, anyway, oh, let's see, where, what was I doing? <laughs> let's just make sure I got everything covered here. Yeah, I think I think we're going to need another. I want to make sure we don't have any food that's just going to go to waste here. So this is meat, egg. It's not covering just regular plants. Drinks, cheese, seeds, fruits, leaves, and then everything else is here. Some of the stuff we wouldn't want here, like lye. <laughs> you don't want that in there. Uh, extracts, we don't need that. Press material, not really dealing with that yet. The seeds. Forgot about our seeds. We need to put a stockpile probably up here somewhere for seeds. Uh, we need to carve this out some more. Need some more room. We want to get some seeds next to the farmer. <laughs> seeds. Yes. I think we should still have some of those in the in the uh, yeah, these are bags. So I, I guess you could put these uh, in into barrels. Yeah, so they put a barrel there. It should yeah, see they put all these seeds in that barrel for us. So that's good. But you can see why we need lots and lots of bags. That's what I'm worried about. It's not having enough bags. Okay. Yeah, here we go. So here's the ashery, and this is where we make. The potash for the farm, as well as the lye. Something called milk of lime. I haven't been able to figure that out. <clears throat> you have to have a certain kind of stone, like limestone or calcite. There's a couple of different ones. I just never lucked out and had access to that kind of stone. Okay, so if we have uh, less than 10 potash, make potash. And we'll go ahead and do the lye too. So you make that out of ash as well. It also requires buckets. And let's see. Hey, what happened to all my uh yeah, green glass jugs and all this? Okay. I'll make sure I got plenty of lye when the time comes. So we'll pump that down to the line as well. Okay, so that should work. So that should start making our potash. And again, it makes sense to have that next to our farm. And that's going to be other materials. Potash. Okay, good. So they'll put the potash there. And you can put it right on the fields. And we can go ahead and say fertilize every season. I don't think it's going to work quite yet because we don't have potash made, but we're starting to get there, folks. We are starting to get there. Okay, I need to make some more bedrooms. 
You know, like they say, there's a lot to know, but it's not overwhelming. You don't necessarily have to do everything. You, know, you don't have to make everything. There's some certain things you can trade for. Oops. Make these bedrooms and get some of these beds out of the way. One more. There we go, looking good. <clears throat> Stick these beds up. Yeah, I was hoping some of these would be decorated. I guess they're not. I haven't gotten around to that. We don't have enough uh, gems yet. He's too busy decorating, pimping out wheelbarrows. Can't be caught with just an ordinary wheelbarrow. All right, so we should have some uh, chests made, yeah. And yeah, these dwarves love a nice chest next to their bed. It makes them really happy, even if they're just regular old chests. And I think I also made some cabinets to put the clothes in. Really like this. They're gonna be really happy when they come back. They come back for a nice snooze and they got a brand new shiny cabinet. Awesome chest. Okay, let that run. Now we're out of completely out of drink. They cannot have that. We need to get some uh figure out what the problem is here. Enough fermentable leaves and fruit. Okay, well, I guess I need to make another search for any kind of uh, something we could ferment here. You could ferment those berries. What's this? Grapes! Come on, you can do a grape. For some reason I can't harvest it must not be ready to be harvested. But flash, you can make alcoholic beverages out of grapes. You know, there's a certain alcoholic beverage <laughs> that you may have heard of made out of grapes. Let's go ahead and yeah, less than 15. You're gonna need a lot of charcoal. You can see why I wanted to make this wood, wood bin a little bit bigger. I need to keep a close eye on this, make sure it doesn't run out. It's better to have a, a bigger stockpile. Make it one more row, but see now I'm kind of cutting into my stairway. careful sometimes you can accidentally chop a tree down on top of your head <laughs> ah, see we're out of these damn bags once you start getting these error messages these can just completely cloud up everything and, you know I say don't do it but he's trying to get 10 he doesn't have that many bags just see how much sand he did accumulate got six sand so you're telling me each one of these things requires a separate bag is that the deal you can't put more than one sand in a bag that's gonna make that's gonna get tricky I can't tell if that's telling me that there's no sand in the bag what is this <laughs> Where's my yellow sand at? Yellow sand bag. So if I'm reading this right, you have to have a bag for each sand. You can confirm that, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. This is, I thought it would make sense to me that you could put more than that amount in there, but okay. So we got to get this, this bag thing started. Fertilize, fertilize. We're gonna start getting inundated with these error messages. 
We might be able to make some uh, some more bags. Let's see. Um, we need to see. <clears throat> Process plants to bag requires empty bag. I forget which one of these has to do with the, the bags. Let's go. Ahead, let's go ahead and make some bags though, because I can see that's going to be a, an issue for us. So we can carve out another row of stairs. We'll make this our clothing production area. Probably also start doing some meat. Try to get some hunting going on. It's going to require some. Let me cut this. Let's put the meat industry down here. So you'll need a butcher, a tanner. And those are kind of closely related, so it makes sense, I think, to put them close together. All right. I guess everybody's up here gathering up all these vegetables. <laughs> Hopefully, some of that can be fermented. Oh no! The oh crap! The trade depots. Oh, have time to do that properly. All right, I'm gonna do what they say you should never do and put the trade depot on, on the top of the ground. You know, I know they don't like it when you do that, we can always move it later. And I don't want to deal with having to clear out some space for it. We need to get this done relatively quickly. Now we're going to need a broker. Okay, he's good to go, looks like. I thought I already had a bookkeeper. No, I don't know what happened there. Oh, I guess I got, when I got that population boost, so now he needs a study, doesn't he? Oh boy, study. Let's take another study over here, maybe. <clears throat> I'm going to make this top priority. All right, uh, so the trading is a big, a big deal, and I'm kind of caught flat-footed here. I don't have a lot of stuff I can trade with that's going to be an issue so we need to tell this guy what we want Ooh, <laughs> what we wanted to bring uh so we're going to need all the leather we can get i find is huge uh, cloth is always good any kind of cloth to make bags with and leather uh, the rest of this stuff seeds are usually a good idea but i'm not going to bother this time See weapons, trap components, digging implements, bodyware. Uh, you could try to get some uh, <clears throat> some armor and things to spare you the trouble. Somewhere is bags. Yeah, let's get all the bags. But you're gonna want. You're gonna have plenty of money by the time these guys come back. It's just gonna be a question of do they have anything you would want to trade with. I just probably check them all, that way to be sure to bring them. Let's see, is that everything that I want? Let's bring some vegetables, just randomly clicking stuff. The instruments are good. Good to have instruments, these are hard to make. Okay, that ought to be enough stuff. And then he says the uh, cheese and plants are what he's going to want. So if you can have some cheese and plants ready. extra cash and so that's where he's coming from now the thing is he's got to have a way to get to your trading depot it's easy at the start because it's just a guy with like a donkey but later on there'll be this big wagon and it has to have a three tile clearance to move and I have gotten that thing stuck where it couldn't get to me and then you lose the whole chance it's practically game over because <laughs> you lose he doesn't come back for another year right so you really mess up if you're not if you don't have a way for him to get there. And there's supposed to be a way to check to make sure he can reach you, but it doesn't seem to work. 
<clears throat> See, like the trader says, the broker can access depot, but there's supposed to somewhere here. There's supposed to be a thing that says trader can access the depot. I don't see that anywhere. Uh, do you? <laughs> I don't know if I'm just completely oblivious. All right, so we need to give. The, we need to have something to trade with, and since we got all these meals, that's probably the thing to trade, right? So that ought to be. A, that's it says a thousand. Just go ahead and give them all that, and then whatever else we might need to trade for. We might even want to trade stone. Just whatever it is, we can trade. We do some of this furniture, get it out of the way. Uh, what else do we have? You know, it'd be helpful if there were like numbers. Said, yeah, how many of these things you had? <laughs> uh, let's see what else we might have. We'd have to give up the barrels, but we do have these. Uh, what is this? Some more roasts. Let's, uh, I can always make more barrels. Wow, that's oh, this is a fancy decorated barrel. That's holy cow! It's a thousand gold just for this barrel. Must be decorated with some really great gems. Uh, let's see what else do we want to trade. Uh, let's just start with this, I guess, and see. See what he's got. It's better to make lots of little trades so you get more experience than one big trade they say but it does remind me I never did even get my stupid shell crafting thing going that's what I was going to do up here and I just clean forgot about it I'm going to try to set this up again that's what I wanted to put here eh, I've already got that set up so I don't know I'll just stick it over there instead you know there's a lot to keep up with in this game it's easy to forget, get distracted, you know, and then forget to come back and do whatever it is that needed to be done. I'm getting this guy's office set up so he can do some bookkeeping. <clears throat> yeah, I don't even think I got doors on everything yet. You know, while I'm thinking about it. This is how you smooth out things. So let's just start with this little bit of smoothing. We'll come back and see how that's going. But this will make the room nicer. Oh, I don't want everybody doing it, though. Only select the people who do this. Yes, thank you. And eh, we'll just give it to a few people. Now, this might be a good job for the peasant. But we probably want somebody dedicated to engraving, because that's just going to be it. Engraving's really slow. And it takes a while to get good at it, so we want to let him engrave uh, something we don't really care about at first. Let's just let him engrave like... Uh, I don't want to just have him completely waste it. We'll let him engrave... Uh, eh, I guess we'll just put him to work. Let him engrave... Oops, you gotta smooth it first. That's right, you gotta wait until it's smoothed out. I'm not sure if this counts as engraving to make an old arrow slits. Okay. Are we ready to trade? Yes. Okay, so he's got some brass bars. I like to go through here first and just see uh actually we can go ahead and put all our stuff that we have ready to trade because we Ooh, there's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, animals are good, especially if you remember what you have, so you can match up. Uh, I know I have a cow, so that bull will be great, so then I can have a little uh, group of those. Let's go ahead and pick up the alpaca and the reindeer. I know I have a reindeer. I'm not sure if it's reindeer, cow, or bull. Same with the alpaca, but it's good to get those guys breeding. I got some crossbows. This will be useful. Let's see what I'm up to now. So I'm already. No, he's. No, he's. He, we're still good. Okay, good. We'll get some more goods to trade with and come back. Uh, let's see. Bags. Yes. Get all the bags. Ooh, these are expensive bags. I don't need fancy bags. 
All oh, this uh, wool is... Okay, I can't afford to do that. We need all the cloth and stuff we can get, though. I always run out of that. Okay, that's gone yellow. So you want this to be green here, where it says Trader Profit. Okay, let's see if we get a little bit closer. Grab that silk. So right about there. Okay, trade. Now... We can uh, get some more goods in. What else do we have? Prepared food. Another thousand. Looks like he's got plenty of stuff we could trade for. I get rid of that fancy barrel, I guess. I had trade my beds, but you know, we trade the ones that didn't come out so well. <laughs> a couple of them anyway. I really don't like trading my bins. Oh, those are gems. We don't want to trade those. Yeah, let's just leave those. I'm, just, I'm not really set up real nice yet for uh, this trade. It kind of snuck up on me, I have to admit. Kind of snuck up on me. Let's trade the ones that are decorated. I could probably get more of this if I needed to. 600. Go ahead and trade that too. Okay, let them uh, bring the stuff up here. <clears throat> and again, what you really want to trade for is stuff that you can't make very easily yourself, obviously. Another 1896 worth of stuff. Let's see what else he's got. Good trade for that meat. I want these plump helmets. And food. Stuff we can ferment. That sounds good. What do we taste? Like? Some more thread. Ooh. Grab the cheap thread. Backpacks, no. Cheese, no. I don't want to buy the... Oh, this is good. The, the scrolls are good. We built our library. They're going to want that. Might as well grab some of that parchment. I thought when he would have an instrument. I don't see any finished instruments. Let's go ahead and see if we can grab that cloth there. Cloth. A little too expensive. Let's see. All right, that's good. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. It would have been nice if I had had more stuff to trade, but... Okay, now we need to get these animals out of their pens. There's a bull. Yep. Alpaca. Wait, how do you that right? <laughs> no, don't put the bull with the alpaca. Put the alpaca with the alpaca. It's a male alpaca. It looks like I got a baby and a female. Okay, good. So I can have me some alpacas going. Go ahead and give these guys some room to romp. And the cow. Hey, <laughs> here you go. Because it's blue good and. Having a, a bunch of cows is going to be great because, you know, they make milk and leather. You know, that's a pretty big deal there. Okay, what was the other thing? What was that other thing I got? Reindeer. I got a reindeer calf. Okay, I think that's everything, right? All right, man, I am so discombobulated now. What were we doing? Do I still not have any tur any uh, potash? Why don't we have potash? Not enough ash. Why don't I have enough ash? 
amount of ash is less than 10. How much ash do I have? I have 10. Oh, you see, there's that problem, right? So we got 10 ash. This guy says less than 10, so we need to bump that down. Nope, that's not right. Oh, wait. Amount of ash greater than 9. So I have 10. That's last I checked, 10 is greater than 9. I wonder if it's... Oh, buckets. Buckets. Now this guy, what's his problem? Okay, less than 10 potash. More than 9. Uh, bump it down a little bit then, I guess. I want that potash. I don't quite understand what's going on with this stockpile. I don't think I quite got the deal. Can you put bags into barrels or is it bins? Oh boy. I'm so confused. <laughs> so a sandbag, is that a barrel thing or is that a bin thing? I guess we'll just have to experiment to find out. Try it that way and see what they put in there. Alright, there's a bag. Okay, there he put a barrel in there. Okay, so it looks like he does put the sandbag into the barrel. So we don't need a bin in there. And we can shrink that back down now. Okay, that's good. So that's a place for them to put sandbags. Now he should start... I guess he wants to get a full ten bags. He made a green glass jug already, though. It does remind me, we haven't made our tavern yet. Before we do anything else though, I need to get my craft operation going. So I'm going to make this guy just dedicate him to shell crafts, because he can grab the shells from this, this guy. Make fun uh, shell finished goods. And we'll put those up here, probably a good spot to have a little little place for finished goods. And open it up a little bit. And then next time the trader comes, we'll have some finished goods we can sell. See how he can go through the sand really, really quick. So it's a good place. We're going to need like a big stockpile. You can build it in the sand. Alright, and that's done. So let's go ahead and make our finished goods stockpile. I only want to stick a wheelbarrow or two in here. And then finished goods. Make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, see they're grabbing all that stuff from the, the wagon now. Maximum bins. 28. Probably too many. I think four will be sufficient for now. See how they tidied that up, though? They put all those finished goods into that one barrel. So we don't even need that big of a stockpile. Come on, delete. Probably better not to have too big a one, because then they'll just start bringing a bunch of garbage in there. Well, speaking of garbage, we haven't set up our refuse pile yet. That's going to be a thing soon. <clears throat> okay. So this is our crafting station. We don't really have anybody fit to be a good crafter yet, so it doesn't... We could just grab somebody, but it's okay. What I want to do with this guy is just set him on shell crafts. And we'll grab some of those shells that this fisherman's making. And make some shell crafts. And we can just do a, just set a number on this. 
let's say, uh, let's say make a hundred shell crafts. That'll give us some stuff we can trade with, and then we can we can also decorate with shell. So yeah, he's taking these. He should be taking these, uh, yeah, pond turtle shell, and then then he'll make something. Let's just see what he makes. If you put it on crafts, it could be anything like a bracelet, a necklace. Lots of different options. So he made two things with that one shell. He made a bracelet and a shell figurine, and it's worth fourteen. So that just the shell by itself is worth nothing. So he took something that was worth nothing, and he made a bracelet that's worth fourteen, and a shell figurine that's worth ten. So that's <laughs> do the math on that. Not bad. So we'll just leave that open. Anybody can come in there and make a shell thing. You know, you'd want to have a dedicated person to do it, probably, so they could get get good at the carving. Why don't we just do that instead of just leaving it wide open? Uh, I hate to use one of these metal crackers on this because we do need those eventually. But I noticed that we have two blacksmiths. We probably don't need two blacksmiths, so we could let one work on this. Just let them get good at it. Okay. And then these workshops down here, we could start our leather production. <clears throat> I mean, our uh, clothing production. Pro you know, actually, do I want to do that here or make a separate area? Hmm. You probably don't necessarily need to have your clothing all on a separate level, but yeah, let's just do it down here. I kind of like, would almost prefer to have it on a separate level just to keep it nice and organized, but it's not ultimately necessary. So we need the loom to spin the thread, and then we need the uh, clothes maker. Yes. And then we got some stuff to, special for leather. So we're going to need a butcher here somewhere. But you really want to be careful where you stick that butcher. You talk about a mess. <laughs> okay, is that everything? I want to do it like this. I think I still got enough room. I can make a hallway there. Let's do this. So the, they can take the leather for the butcher. They can take the stuff straight over to the tanner. Yeah, that should work. Okay, yeah. Let's just make sure these guys are ready to take meat. Right, he doesn't take meat. This guy does take meat. Let's turn him his meat off, though. Make a special one just for the meat. Okay. Food, meat. I don't know if it's even necessary to do this, but why not? Three barrels ought to be enough. You probably don't even need it to be this big. Why don't we do that thing again where we let it bring the barrels in before we... Ah! <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay. Make a stockpile. There we go. Let's just make it four by four. And stick some uh, four barrels in it. That ought to be enough, right? To cover everything. Let's see. Do we have enough barrels to be putting in there. There's one. You can see which ones have stuff in them. So it looks like I got a couple empty ones. Yeah, should be fine. Now, I don't know if they don't... Maybe they only put one barrel in it until you fill that barrel. And then maybe they bring another barrel. Okay, 
got the loom, so you can see he's already over here spreading, making a thread cloth. That's good. You do need some separate, sometimes you need thread for other things. Uh, like a musical instrument, some of them require thread for like the strings and things. So I don't know, we don't won't worry about it right now, but at some point you might want to automate, take, turn off the automation for this so you can uh, use your thread more intelligently. Okay, we need to get these bags going. So if you, if you have fewer than, less than 10 empty bags, and you've got unused plant cloth, <clears throat> so cotton or whatever, is greater than 10. Make 10 bags. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and do it for all the other materials, though, because uh, you might have silk. Oh, it's a little bit of silk from some somewhere, some source. And then the same thing with the uh, yarn. Okay, so that should give us some bag production. Now later on, we'll need to come in here and say, do the same thing for all the different clothing items. So you have a don't necessarily need 10 of each thing, but you want to have a little supply of like caps and vests and robes and all the rest of it. So when the, these guys uh, have about two years worth of clothes <laughs> until their clothes start getting threadbare. And then you want them to be able to uh, get some fresh, fresh threads, right? Okay, get our butcher going. We're not going to have anything to butch. <laughs> Uh, right away, but we'll go ahead and get him set up and then Next to him is where you can put the uh, uh, the Tanner and Take all those parts, you know from the, the butcher right over to the tanning shop You know we could even do another little leg here and have uh, Have the leather worker right there and We could just feed into each other that ought to be nice. Now why don't I make these two down here? Uh, now we could do a dyer. This needs live milk-free bucket. Oh, we're out of buckets. Okay. Well, I thought I had the glass maker working on that for us. This guy's still trying to collect sand. So we've got that snag with the bags. Once we get the bag situation sorted, that should start making a... This should start churning out glass jugs, goblets, and pots. Uh, just as a backup, though, we might, we could always have the rock person. The rock person can also make... Um, I keep thinking it's rock. It's not rock. It's a the crafter. We can have the crafter make jugs and mugs and pots. So we could do this just kind of as a backup. Let's do jug. Oh, sorry. I'd rather have them made out of glass, you know, but we could just say if you don't. If empty. Now, see, this is the, the sucky thing here, just says empty rock jugs. So we need to change this a little bit. Um, liquid container items, right? Oops. Liquid container rock jugs, no. Okay, maybe I don't know what I'm doing after all. <laughs> but we could have a couple of these rock jugs on hand just in case. Don't need ten of them. Say if it's less than five, let's just have like three. Wouldn't it be nice if I could click there and adjust the number? Make rock jugs. Okay, so make make three rock jugs if we have less than three rock jugs. That's so we should always have at least three jugs. And same thing with the uh, <clears throat> rock pots. Make three rock pots if we have less than. three. This way I just have a few extra little pots. I don't want to get care I don't want this to be the majority of my containers though. Oops, what the hell is that? I think there's one other thing. A mug. 
Okay, let's do the mugs too. Again, just a few. I don't want this to be churning out hundreds of mugs. <laughs> okay, let's take a look to make sure you like this. All right, make shells, crafts, make jugs, pots, mugs. And we can even come in here and adjust this a little bit. You can say that's a little bit more of a priority because he's going to be working on those. Uh, he's going to be working on those shell crafts for a long time. Be nice if you could say this is low priority without having to go through that cumbersome up and down arrow thing. Hopefully that's something they'll fix relatively soon. Okay, now that we got this going, we can have our set up some more stockpiles. We can make this stockpile for the cloth. Don't want that many bins. Three bins is fine. Don't really need a wheelbarrow. I don't think this cloth is very heavy. Probably don't even need that big of a stockpile for it. And then over here we could put the thread. I think that's under... Oh, I guess they're all tied together. Why don't we do the... Do that one for thread and this one. Take the thread off. Yes. Oops. Nope. Nope. <laughs> we'll get it right here. Okay, none. None. No thread. Okay, so this way we'll be able to see what how much cloth and thread we have at a glance. And I don't think we're really going to need a thing for leather because I probably won't ever have enough of that to justify the effort. Yeah, we're going to need some more bins. I hate to make them out of wood, but you know what? That's what we got right now. Good. I have to make some more bins for us. Now, why are they putting sticks of sand over here? No! No! This is why you gotta, like, be so. You gotta micromanage the heck out of this. Oh, there's a. I forgot all about the corn. <laughs> the corn? You know, is that even how you say that? Something tells me it's probably pronounced in some other way. It's a corn. It's a corn or something. Where do we want to put it? I guess that's as good a spot as any. Dolomite quartz. Okay, now with this guy, make mash plants into slurry or mill seeds and nuts to paste. This is where we're going to get our seeds. They're going to be coming quick. You don't want to get carried away here with this. Yeah, see, they're going to kill us about this, these buckets. Go ahead and make some buckets. I really hate making stuff out of wood, but what can you do? Until we get our uh, the sand operation going. We could... No, this is sand, yeah. I don't think we have any clay yet, do we? I haven't seen anything that said clay. So we might have to, you can. There are certain stones you can use instead of clay. If you don't have a place to gather clay. I don't know if that's the case here. I guess we could do a quick look at our stones. Let's see. Where's that stone use? Make clay hives. So calonite is good for clay stuff. Um, I thought there was more stuff you could use. Yeah, castorite, castorite is good for clay. Calonite. Think I don't think we've discovered everything. I think there's a lot more stones. So anyway, cassiterite, kaolinite, do we have any of that? So if we do, we could, uh, yeah, I don't see that. Not, where did that come from? Where is that clay? Well, anyway, you know, at some point we can 
see if we could find some clay somewhere. We haven't really explored at all this, uh, this place we're at. So there is that. Just making sure I've got some empty bedrooms. Okay. So we're making bags. Yes, we're making bags. I can tell you right now, we don't need that big of a stockpile. Can cut a little bit off of this one too. Just like keeping things tidy, you know? Get rid of that too. I'm huh? just like a nice. <laughs> I'm in something about this just bringing out the neat freak in me, you know. Can I just yeah, there we go. There we go. Now you don't need to be this. Probably don't need to be this. Uh, this detail oriented. But why not? Are right, these making jugs? Right, so we need to start thinking about hunting now, because you can see we haven't had... Why am I out of drinks again? God, dog it. Oh, I don't know if these are food storage items. That's barrels, right? Oh, no. What are we out of? It looks like I got some empty barrels. I wonder if it's buckets he needs. Either buckets or jugs, one of them. <clears throat> they don't like being out of drinks, so that's bad. Let's see if we could figure out what it is that they need. Okay, he brings a turnip and a barrel. Yeah, so they need more barrels. Where's our. Uh, so this guy just still collecting sand. Come on with the sand. Is he? It's like there's somewhere they're collecting sand. Okay. Now we need to get figure out this barrel situation because we're going to run out of wood. Have to keep making everything out of wood. Well, at least it will turn out some nice wooden barrels. Oof. All right, it's tanner shop. We don't need it right away, but we might as well get the uh, leather worker. Now we need to <coughs> uh, a bowman. We got one. We we'll actually have a steel crossbow. I don't know where that came from. So we could start hunting. We could start hunting. That'll be nice. Let's see. Um, who can hunt? We got a competent marked dwarf. So to hunt, you need a uh, some ammo. And a quiver. So we've got quivers, we've got a bow, we just don't have any arrows. There's a couple places you could make arrows. This guy, I think, can make them out of bone or wooden or wood. So unfortunately, I think we're going to have to make them out of wood for a while until we get some bone. I don't... We'll have bone eventually. Okay, that'll work. And when that pops up here, we need to expedite it. Or I guess we can go into the crafting menu here. Now this is, it would be really nice, again, if I could just say, go to the top. <laughs> Instead of making me carefully try to line this up and get it into position. Where's our... I want it to be ahead of the 
shell crafts. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Ammo. Oh, wooden boots. Let's keep going. Did I get a hand of the shell crafts? Yeah. Yeah, that gets tricky to see. Okay. There's our wooden bolts. We got the top priority. Yes. Okay, and then we should get that guy out there hunting. Oh, let's check this guy out. Alright, so he's taking the pigtails. And he should be making it... Let's see what he's making. Pigtail seeds and pigtail slurry. And I think... One of those you use for making... It's either cloth or paper. I think it's... Paper for the slurry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that does not make thread. He's milking the goat. <laughs> He's making all this, all this paste. Now that's, this is where it'd be useful if it would tell you, like, what is it? Glob. So like pigtail slurry, right? See, it doesn't give me any useful information here. It just says two pigtail slurries. It'd be nice if it would say, like, what is this used for? <laughs> Instead of having to go to the wiki, but, you know. I'm pretty sure that's... You either use that for paper. Uh, screw press. Useful for pressing liquids. Empty jugs are required to store the products. Needs two mechanisms, over. A little ways from needing that. I guess we could put that somewhere. Now for that we need an engineer. Well, let's just go ahead and make these other things I need. The, the bow here is kind of useless. I don't know why there's... You can't just make this somewhere else. But it's the only way to make uh, wooden bone crossbows. So make that, and we also need that, uh, it's going to take several steps to get to the, I guess we could put the mechanic, it's another thing you don't really use that much, Just stick it over here I guess. So I have to make mechanisms, and then we can, there's a few other little things we can make, like the screw press for making paper with. Not a big high priority at the moment. Main thing I need is clothing. I'm trying to remember what we, how we get to the, how we make cloth, pigtail cloth. I think. So he's just going to press it all into slurry. Ash plant into slurry. So we might want to cut him off before he uses up all our pigtails. We are getting more seed, which is nice, but. Rock nut paste. I guess we'll just let them do that order. Finish that. So I got fish coming. One drink. No. Totally failing. Okay. Leaves and fruit. So we need more of those, I guess, jars or barrels. Come on, dude. Make these barrels. We made way too many. Look at all these bins and barrels. And... Oh, we got some more migrants. That's good. <coughs> glass maker. We can put the glass maker to work in here. Legendary glass maker. Ha <laughs> ha! Now that is awesome. Uh, so this person, everything they make will be like really top quality. Now, unfortunately, I can't figure out why. So, goblets, pots, and mugs, right? What? What is the... What am I missing? Box? 
think that's the same as the bin. Oh, see, there's another little bug. Amount of sand bearing items. I think the boxes are useful too. Green glass. Pretty sure those are the. I can't remember if those are the, the chests, or if that's the same thing as a bin. For some reason, they changed the name on you. All right. Anything else we might want to make out of glass? We could do doors out of glass. I think I'm making pots already, right? Terrarium. Windows are really cool. Oh, I hate that it messes up. See this? <clears throat> I can't see what I'm making anymore. Pots, jugs, goblets. And they should be putting those in, in here, right? Yeah, there's these dolomite mugs, jugs, goblets. I might be thinking of the large clay pots. Maybe that's different than a large glass pot for some reason. When it comes to food containment. And I can see I already need to chop down some more trees. And this guy's still not fertilizing. Even though I have potash, now he should be. Yeah, fertilized field, good. So that'll ratchet up that production. Okay. I know I got some New migrants. Um, I get a little too excited about that legendary glass maker. Okay, got a ranger, another weaponsmith. See, this ranger is just a novice. This weaponsmith is legendary weaponsmith. All right. We're a little bit away from needing a weaponsmith, though. Probably going to want to put him around this charcoal maker for now. We're going to need smelting. We're going to need a lot of industry to really get that going well. Okay, let's see. There's going to be our wood. Charcoal. Where's our charcoal going? I think it's up here, right? Ash. Charcoal. We're going to need more charcoal. Uh, we can make another stockpile here. But we're going to need smelting operations. And then the weaponsmith can be across from it. We're going to need a place to put bars. This should be okay. I want to make these mechanisms. Go ahead and make a bunch of those. And we need some crossbows, hunting. This guy. Oh, we're out of gems. Okay, that's, that's good. You could do them. Have a, you could have them polish stones, make glass gems. But, well, there'll be so many gems later on. It won't even be a thing. You might also want to have a separate charcoal and ash maker. Just because that is a, it's like the, the linchpin of our whole economy, right? <laughs> you start to run low. Okay, good. We could put a little thing here for, uh, I guess what? Bows and mechanisms? Weapons, crossbows, and all total quality. All. I wonder if this is going to work. So just the wood and the bone crossbows. I guess you can put those mechanisms in there too. I don't remember what those are considered. Mechanisms.
Let's see if that works. Doesn't look like he's putting mechanisms in there. Cool quality of the materials. Nothing to care, put everything in there. This guy, let's see if he puts his wooden crossbow in this. There we go, there's a box. Oh, don't, don't fill it with boxes. start smelting away. Now this is an intensive thing though. This is going to put a lot of drain on our charcoal over there. All right, putting the mechanisms in there. I don't see the crossbows though. What am I missing? Right, crossbows, other materials. Does it need to be set usable? That specific. It's an unusable weapon. Or he must have been the thing to check because he's putting the crossbows in there now. What is this unrotten paper slurryable pants? Mash plants. <laughs> Mash plant in the slurry. So yeah, we're gonna like this this is the part of the game I hate. I wish there was a way to turn these off or keep them from spamming like this. Now I thought I set everything up so that it wouldn't generate those, but I never something I just can't seem to do it right. Bookkeeper, stream, shrink pyrites. I think that's an old message. Blue barrels, lavish meals, charcoal rock, masterpieces. If you really want to get fancy, one of the things I like to role play is to find the bedroom of the people making these masterpieces. You could put a little uh, pedestal in the room and put one of their masterpieces on it. Just, or make a display case so they could put it in the display case and have it in their bedroom or their office. I always thought that was a, a nice little thing. Well, let's see, I don't, we've been gone for a while. I don't know how much of this you want to see me do. <laughs> yeah, I could go. I could play this, you know, for the rest of the, the rest of the month. I guess it just seems to go on and on. But we don't have unlimited time, so let's make a few more bedrooms. I want to show you the get the militia started, just so you can see what that looks like. That's a big part of the game. You know, if we got raided right now, we'd just be food bored because we did not even have the start of an army. That doesn't look right. That's right. I intend to make this broader. Alright. Here's a few extra bedrooms. Yeah, it's good to have a, uh, you know, more space is better. I don't like to cram everything together. Why is my guy not hunting? He should be a hunter. Dabbling ambush. Thob. So if you want to follow Thob and figure out what he's doing, we can find him here on the list. It says he's hunting. Click this little movie camera and that should keep him in target, keep him in range. So there he goes. Just turn that back on. I guess he's waiting on prey. Okay, so we got 17 people. That's really it's, it's gonna be rough to have to sacrifice one's productivity. And you can see you got that ranger there not doing anything. Metal crafter not doing anything. This is the legendary one though, so we don't want to. We need to get this person working because <laughs> that's gonna be extremely valuable stuff. Legendaries, you gotta protect them. It's, it's you don't get too many of those. All right, 
Got the smelter going. I don't know if we have enough stones. Let's see what we got here. Don't, we got a little hematite, lignite you can make coal with, tetrahydrite's good for silver. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of this uh, hematite going. So smelt the hematite. Again, you got to set all this right. And this is for iron. Go ahead and do the tetrahydrite too. That's for silver and copper. You can see you can set this up in a couple of different ways. Uh, you know, every now and then when you're smelting this, you get silver instead of copper. I don't know if it's both or either or, but you know, it's silver and copper are both useful. Okay, we don't have enough coal. So this guy's going switching back and forth between making ash and charcoal. So probably what we're going to have to do is make a, another wood burner. And there's this whole other thing about using a magma. <laughs> Dig deep enough, you can have magma, and then that's hot. It's like lava from a volcano, and that's hot enough where you can just smelt things without even having to have uh, any wood. So let's just make this guy nothing but nothing but a uh, charcoal. Okay, and that oughta. This is going to use up more wood, but should get a little more charcoal going. And we're going to need a, a wood pile here for the charcoal, or for refined coal. Let's see, I think that uses bins. Let's go ahead and get some a couple of bins in there before we do anything. Okay, good. And now we're going to fill this up with charcoal. Or just coal. So you're going to need tons of that. I'm going to make it to be this big. A little bit of this. It's going to need a place to put bars too once we start getting those. Let's go ahead and make the stockpile for the bars. I got just about enough room there. Again, with the probably going to want a full four bins. overwhelming things with bins here. Yeah, I think I got enough bins. Okay, and then we'll make this for metal bars. Hopefully we're going to start churning these things out. You're going to need more coal. Good. <clears throat> now one of the cool things you can do if you're running low on coal there's this stuff called bitumous or bitumous coal. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, bituminous coal. So you can take one of these and you have to have a charcoal, but it spits out like four or five. So it's a good way to generate. You don't have to be quite so reliant on, uh, on wood. Let's set up these bedrooms. But it's, like I say, it's a challenge keeping enough wood. It's not that big a deal. You just have to keep remembering, hey, I need to go chop more wood. You know, it's, you can't really automatic. It would be nice if there was some way you could just say, just, oh, you know, if they're running all the wood, go into this zone and chop some more wood down. <laughs> you know, wouldn't that be nice if they could automate that? Wouldn't that be nice? They probably will at some point, unless he thinks that's part of the the spirit of the game, not to remember to do that every now and then. Not that big of a deal. But... Okay, I'm just going to do this. These doors in position. Eh, I got one empty one there, but uh, who cares. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I haven't really shown you that I really want to. There's just so much to this game. We should. I guess we're waiting on this charcoal. Get the charcoal. 
It's just tetrahydrite. Oh, so they got some ore of silver and copper. What's he putting in there? Ore? What's he putting in here? <laughs> Uses. Oh, one piece of tetrahydrite. Oh, so he, he's putting the ore in there. I wonder why he's doing that. Bars and blocks. I thought it specified only buffers. Well, maybe it was just under there. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Oh boy, not making enough of this charcoal. And I got this guy up here competing for charcoal too. In these glass pots that I guess nobody wants. Now they're using them. See, they're using them for food production. Now you can see all these shells piling up in here. Now one thing you can do is make a refuse pile. I guess that would be worth showing you how to do. But the problem with that is I don't necessarily want these shells to be destroyed. You know, I want to use them uh, for this blacksmith, but you can get uh, so many to a certain point, you know, it just kind of becomes ridiculous. So we could make a garbage pile to get rid of them. Here's how you do that. Uh, you make a special stockpile and you say, all right, uh, let's see, you can put it over. That's pretty close to the, uh, the shell guy, the fish guy. Okay, now you have to be careful with this. So this refuse pile, whatever you put in here will eventually rot. So you don't want to just go crazy and put like everything in there. But we can say put shells in there and then they'll start rotting. Uh, hopefully they won't rot before the shells, whoever, however many shell crafters we have can use them. So there'll still be some, but they'll get rid of some of them. Now another thing about the refuse that we haven't really set up yet, we probably should, is the, the dumping zone. Now there's a lot of ways you can do this. People dig huge holes uh, that they can drop it off and off the face of the earth. There's ways to cheat, basically, like make a drawbridge and have it come down and destroy the trash. You know, I don't quite. You know, I said cheating is probably too strong of a word, but you know, it sounds sounds kind of gimmicky to me. Uh, or we can make a uh, a garbage uh, zone. Let's see, refuse. So you decide, what do you want to, what would you really want to throw away? Uh, you probably don't want corpses, you know, just hanging out inside your base. <laughs> so we can put that on there, get rid of corpses. Uh, body parts could actually be useful. You, know, you might need these uh, for uh, making skins and things. So I might not want to put that there. Uh, hair and wool, you know, probably just junk. Some of them, you know, again, you can spin some of these threads. But when we start butchering things, you can come back here and see what we <laughs> demon rat. <laughs> What's a demon rat? Uh, you can't make, uh, you can't spin every type of hair and wool. So, I don't know, we could just leave this off and just kind of keep an eye on the butcher shop, basically, and see what's, see what's useful and see what just needs to be tossed. Okay, so but we I think it's safe to say we want the uh, corpses out of here. Now we also probably want a dumping zone. Now what this does, it's a garbage dump. You only need to make it one tile because basically it's an infinitely stackable tile. Uh, they can put, you know, endless amounts of stuff on the tile. And if you mark something specifically for dumping, they'll come out here and put it. So again, something useful that. Uh, let me show you the labor. There's a uh, standing orders, refuse, and dumping. Uh, so you can tell them what the, what you want to do here. Do you want to save a corpse or get rid of a corpse? Do you want to save skulls, bones, shells, skins? Save other objects, dump other objects. Uh, so we can try this, and again, just, just keep an eye on it and see what they're putting in there. And if you see them putting stuff that you want to keep, well, you just you know do the opposite of what we just did there. 
Uh, so that'll keep help them keep the base clean. If we start getting little vermin remains, rat <laughs> droppings, or <laughs> you know whatever the case may be. So you see, we've got this refuse pile here. And they're starting to put these shells in here. And since it's marked refuse, these things will start to rot. At least that's my understanding. I mean, they won't rot like a rotten piece of meat would. Now, as soon as that hunter, if that hunter is successful, we should have some meat. Created a masterpiece, large green glass pot. So we're doing good with those pots. Making all sorts of pots. Yeah, you know, I'm almost wondering if we need to make these bigger. Let's take a look at our farmer's workshop, kitchen. Just really want to make sure they're not. We don't have like food clogging up these, this place. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. <laughs> okay, that looks good. Everything looks good. He's making bags. Good. So really, about all we have left to do is get that military. Oh, I forgot about the. Uh... Yeah, we want to make a screw press. That's, this would be useful for making paper with. We haven't really gotten to libraries yet. But I think you can do some other stuff with it. Press liquid from paste, or press a plant slurry into paper sheet. Let's just try both of these and study what happens. That's the way you really learn a lot, is just if you pay attention to the dwarves. Okay, see, like he went over there. So he's doing the plant slurry into paper sheets. So you can see he took this hemp slurry and he should make a sheet out of it. And then with the sheets, you could make scrolls for your library, which we haven't built yet. <laughs> yeah, there's the hemp paper sheets. Good. Uh, so what? that's a crafting thing. So you could make another little stockpile here somewhere. And put sheets in it. Probably don't need it to be that big. I think that's considered a... No, it's not a finished good. What is it? Yeah, it's just got its own thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's see what kind of uh, containment they need. It's a bin. Okay, we don't need that many. Probably three would be enough. Again, let's... Uh... Well, that should be five. So Let's shrink it a little bit, though. That'll be good. That, that, that'll be plenty of paper sheets. Yeah, matter of fact, we probably only need one. Or two. Yeah, one bin will be fine for now anyway. How many sheets do I have? Oh, just a couple. Uh, but yeah, you can make uh, books for your... You can make a library and have scholars in there and they'll write books. And you can have scribes that'll copy manuscripts. And you know, That can be really lucrative once you get all kinds of visitors that'll come to your... Your fortress to study with uh, your scholars is <laughs> you know just kind of as a professor i love that it's one of the first things i always build but i'm kind of getting worried because we haven't really done anything with the military yet and you really do not want to be hanging around without any uh, military so i'm just going to kind of jump start this thing see what kind of uh, stones we have dolomite hematite Lignite. I think we're going to start doing something with this uh, hematite. And let's just start smelting some hematite. I can talk. Let's watch them go in there. Yeah, see, they're using those wheelbarrows. Those things are useful for heavy stuff. You don't necessarily need to bother with like a parchment piece of sh you know piece of paper. Come on, <laughs> something heavy like a like a stone or ore. Or I guess maybe even a barrel. All right, so he takes the hematite and the charcoal. Let's see how much iron we get out of this. Okay, yeah. Okay, got four iron bars. That's pretty good. Now we can go over to this metalsmith here. And we want to recruit somebody to be the uh, militia... And I think you could just make the peasant, you know, because we don't necessarily want somebody that's doing valuable work to be running the militia. 
You know, we want them to just, just to be focused on militia work, you know, being a soldier. <laughs> Not, you know, always doing other stuff. Okay. Uh, um, uh, now we need to make a, there we go, a squad. Now this gets a little complicated. It's basically your troops. You can uh, have a whole bunch. You can decide if you want them to be melee types, which is be metal armor, or I guess maybe leather armor. Never really messed with the leather armor. <laughs> or you can have them be archers. You know, I, I tend to think of uh, metal armor being the most important, like your frontline troops. And if you have some later on, when you have more people, you can do some archer training. Uh, let's just go ahead and do the metal armor. We don't have any yet, but it's okay. And you can see this routine off duty, right? So it's just the one person, that peasant. You could, uh, if you got anybody else that you want to stick in there. Like, we do have this weaponsmith, a competent mace dwarf, but we're going to pull off the weaponsmith, and then, you know, if we do get attacked, you'd sure hate to lose this <laughs> legendary person. So we just leave that, wait until we get some more peasants. But we can go ahead and start this person on training, or at least give them a weapon. Let's see what kind of weapon they want. So we could say equip. There we go. Okay, so they got this weapon. Let's see what they picked. Items, military uniform. So they got a battle axe. So one of the things we could do is upgrade the that copper battle axe to a metal or an iron battle axe here at this uh, metalsmith's forge. Now, since we do have this super duper legendary weaponsmith, we just do this only this kind of work. Don't put out this awesome iron battle axe. It should be much better than that copper piece. Now, you see, it just says off duty. Let's go ahead and give them uh, everything else we can. I think we got what? Uh... And there's the battle axe already. That was quick. Uh, let's make some armor. Let's make a breastplate and a iron helmet. And a shield's good. We can worry about the other stuff later. That's a me it's a weapon smith, but you know they'll still good <clears throat> produce good stuff. So that took a lot of iron. You see, it took three pieces. So to take all three pieces just to make that one breastplate? Looks like, I don't know if they're, yeah, it looks like it took three iron bars to make the breastplate. Okay, that's a lot of, that's a lot. We'll probably get an error about not having enough, uh, you know, whatchamacallit. Now, okay, so we got, she should be able, or he, should be able to equip this stuff now. Let's see what they do. Yeah, they got the breastplate and the battle axe already. Good. Okay, now we can start them training. So for that, I like to put it, you know, not necessarily on top of the surface, but real close, because you, if anything goes wrong, uh, you want them right there. You know, so they can run up and kill. <laughs> <laughs> run up and kill so you can make the barracks this is a I love this part of the game it's just the one person for now so we just make it I, I keep you know I'm realizing I'm just making a video to show you the game <laughs> but you know you're, I'm always thinking long term like what am I gonna do eventually you're gonna want you know this that and the other. okay so we want them to sleep here or train here everything here Put a bed in here. Oops. Yeah. Furniture bed. And a chest for them to keep their goodies in. And then, um, whoops. Oh, they're going to need some uh, an armor stand and a weapon rack, which I forgot to make. So we could make that out of glass, actually. Green glass, armor stand. Glass weapon rack. Let's make these top priorities. I wonder what they're doing with these, these Dolomite coffers. What are they doing with these boxes that they're making up there? Is that considered a chest or a cabinet? It's 
not a chest. It's not a cabinet. <laughs> what the heck is the... They're using it for something. Right there. It's making lots of pots, though. God. All right, there she is, or he is. Okay, let's see. Furniture, get the... Uh... Oh, it's under military. Weapon rack. That eh, doesn't want that one. Let's see if we can get it. Maybe right on top of where she's at. Right above there would be a good spot. We haven't even got our <laughs> any walls around this. <laughs> Looks kind of crappy. We could... No, not that. I understand. Well, they haven't made it. Why haven't you made it? Yeah, those are chests. Okay, why didn't you make the... Why didn't they make the thing? In our armor stand, where's the... Oh, that's the armor stand. <laughs> oh, quit doing that, Matt! Military weapon rack, yes. There we go. Okay, and then... Good. <clears throat> now I just, I guess I might as well show you this anyway. So we can make walls around things with this. You see what, see how it works. Okay, that'll give room a little bit of privacy. Now the nice thing about this, we can engrave this, we just can't smooth it out. You don't need to smooth it, it's already smooth. Alright. Now, we can go under here to schedule. And you can get however granular you want with this. You could say just always train, which I think is probably the best thing at this point because you really want at least one person that can fight. And, uh, but you could say, you know, I just kind of want these weekend warriors to come in maybe three or four times a month, however you want to set that up. Do a little training and then go back to their regular jobs. You know, that's certainly possible. Uh, if you put them off duty and they don't have anything to do, sometimes they'll come here and train anyway. It's kind of nice. Or you can just say, always be ready to fight. But I'll just do the constant training. Now, she sh he should come down here yeah, and gear up. Let's see what's he doing. Storing an item in the bin. It's a she. Iron bars training session, so yeah, she's sleeping now, but she'll uh, do these little individual combat drills. You really want to have more than one soldier at a time because if you have two or three, they can do these demonstrations and they'll spar with each other. It's kind of fun, kind of a little mini game in and of itself, watching them spar with each other and uh, put on demonstrations and things. But you know, you, we probably won't get attacked for a while, but it's just for peace of mind. I like to have. <laughs> You know, a decent-sized militia, uh, as quick as I possibly can, maybe even five, six, ten people, since we start to get some more migrants coming in, you know, stick them on the training. Because there will be goblins that will come, find stuff in the dungeons, dig down deep enough, you might be fighting uh, even rats. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is enough uh, to get you started, I think. So let's go ahead and save this here. Then I'll switch over and show you one of my other games where I've been playing a lot longer. So you can see what the you know what a big game looks like once you've been playing a few hundred hours. Alright, let's see. Quick back to the main menu. I think it's yeah, 43 saves. <laughs> yeah, I can't get track storage. <laughs> You know, they got these mine carts. I don't know what the deal is. I've watched videos, I've read about them. I just can't seem to get them to work. You know, the consensus seems to be that the wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows make them obsolete anyway or irrelevant. So yeah, that's where I was fooling around there. But you know, I might continue to work on it. Uh, I think it'd be neat to have these, you know, these going up and down different levels of your, of your caves. And it's just kind of fun watching the dwarves ride in them and push them and things. You know, here we got like 192 people here on the world map. Oops. I've conquered a couple of these other uh, nearby settlements. They're economically linked to me. 
that's kind of fun to do. You can send some of your militia out to conquer or, or to raid. Uh, that's fun. Let's see what else I got here. A pretty big industry. I got lots of levels. You learn something every time you play this. I'm always like, man, next time I do it, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna change that and <laughs> do this instead. Like I said, I had this insane amount of seeds, huge number of seeds, because I kept uh, kept quirting and and I have a, actually a millstone here connected to a windmill, which is even uh, faster. But you end up with just tons and tons of seeds. And you got these bees that are producing honey and wax. You could actually make crafts with wax, or you could make mead with the honey. That's really cool. I got big herds of uh, these buffalo and calf, and you know, a lot of people. Uh, you know, get, I haven't. I guess I haven't played that long. You know, maybe there's stuff that I haven't seen yet. But they, you know, I've been raided a whole bunch of times, as you can see. <laughs> but, but typically, you know, I just send out these boys and, and girls, and you know, they're really. I have like axe lords and <laughs> sword bastards. <laughs> these guys. <laughs> it's just. I mean. Yeah, uh, they don't they don't die. They kill, and they're all decked out in steel. Yeah, I don't know why anybody would even try to be stupid enough to try to uh, to raid me. But you know, sometimes they come over like three or four, or maybe even nine or ten goblins, and I just small them down real quick. It's a good source of copper. <laughs> yeah, look at these. Uh, I even have like humans, elite marks dwarf. I mean, you're not getting past the getting past this elite marks. Elite uh, Mark's Dwarf. This is a leather person. Oh, wow, they got funky gloves on. What's up with that? Need to make some more. Th these X's mean it's worn out. So I don't know why this person is wearing worn out stuff. That is not cool. What is up with you? That's why it's probably yellow. I think it's... Uh... Yeah, what? The... Why? <laughs> Uh, this person though has got steel steel battle axe that's good i think there's one more thing better than steel or maybe there's more than that but uh, somehow you get adamantium i haven't been able to find that yet but you look at all this stuff i mean it's you can see how messy things get though like all these pigs got like slugs all over the place that's why i was saying you kind of want to keep your uh barnyard animals separated from the rest of your base and just put them in their own little area now once you get if you get down low enough you find these things called caverns i'll show you one you'll find them if you just keep digging down 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 and here we go you get to these things called caverns just big open pre-tapped areas and the nice thing about this is uh, for one it's a good usually a good source of water you can set up a well and it'll go down and you know, chain it down and get fresh water that way, which is important. I didn't get to that in my other game yet, but you know, eventually you're going to want to have, uh, you know, I'll show you one, like a well here. You can put them on every level once you find the source of water uh, and then put some soap next to it. And then the basically the dwarves come in and take a bath, <laughs> keep nice and clean. <laughs> uh, they like that. Probably cuts down on disease too, but you know, they'll go out and get hunting and then they'll get blood on them and they'll want to come in here and wash the blood off and i just like to keep a little soap handy <laughs> i think there's some of them even now oh they're storing items let's see what's brew drink yeah sometimes you can see them over there taking a taking a bath i guess it'd be kind of funny you know i always as much stuff as in this game i can think of more stuff like why don't they have a bathtub you, know, you should have like a bathhouse uh, that you can build or maybe in the taverns, you could put like a bathtub, or even in their in their home compartment, and you know, bring a bucket, fill up the tub, take a bath. That'd be that'd be fun. I think I lost the track of what I was saying. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, the caverns, and here's some of these inscriptions. So once you smooth things out with this, like that, you can smooth it. And then the next step would be engraving it. So you can have these people come in on each tile. I mean, think about the detail here. Like each of these things that they engrave, the walls, the ceiling, there'll be these little stories you can read about, like who is it, commemorate something. Uh, you can make these special master objects or artifacts. 
and put them on display like every now and then you make the super good ring or super good bracelet and it'll even have its own little story behind it like this Edenton and the dwarves are like kind of funny around though sometimes they'll turn into thieves you know they're so tempted by the item you know, they'll, they'll go berserk and try to steal it <laughs> you can make statues and the statues will be a different things you try to match like sometimes they'll make a, a statue of a particular god and then when you make a temple like here so this temple is dedicated to Mondul uh, never now and then they'll make a statue of Mondul and you put it here in the, in the temple Let's see you got the altar Nothing there in the bookcase. Now these temples are really important. They'll uh, you build temples and taverns, you'll start to get lots of visitors, and pretty soon you get lots of people wanting to move in uh, or to, to be hired. You have these tombs. When people die, you want to you know you don't want to still leave the corpse out on the ground. That wouldn't be very appropriate. <laughs> so you make a tomb and a casket and a uh, preferably a slab too, so you can see who it's who it is and. Uh, that'll make them happy keep the ghost population down or you could just make the slabs you know sometimes you can't find the body or it's gone or something you can just make a slab to, to uh, assuage their spiritual being now this is just poor management <laughs> you know really i i didn't have a full grasp of like how those like what i was showing you before with you know does this type of i want to store this in this stockpile Okay, what kind of container do we need? Barrel bin, whatever. Because you don't really need a huge stockpile except for things like furniture or things that won't fit. You know, like this is a big mess. It's just a mess. A lot of this stuff, like there's no reason this figurine couldn't be in a bin. A bin's, this is a bag. Or it's a bag with, I don't know what's going on. It's just chaos. <laughs> it's, don't do this. Don't do this. Now this this should be much better organized than that. I just got lazy. It's probably like three or four in the morning. I'm like, oh, how would I know? Because I'm having a giant stockpile for everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't do that. Um, channel pulls. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. So the caverns. Once you touch down to the cavern level, uh, then you start to get this fungus growing everywhere. And at first you're like, oh, funky fungus. Oh, I hate the fungus. But it's actually a good thing because all these barnyard animals I haven't done it yet but the, like these cows uh, they have to be outside eating grass right now but now that I have this fungus uh, they could be down here just you know find a spot with a lot of fungus on it and they could just eat the fungus so you could bring your outdoor animals uh, indoors with that so that's pretty sweet um, catapults you have uh, different kinds of ballistae you can build. Uh, there's a crossbow, big giant crossbow thing. It shoots in a straight line. Or you can have these catapults. I haven't found them terribly effective. You know, I guess they're better than nothing. Uh, but that's something you can you can build and train, uh, train up some engineers to use them properly. Uh, you can have these pressure plates and traps so that if something does get through, Maybe you can trap it in a cage, keep it from going down and damaging your stuff. You can have uh, war dogs. You can have people training your dogs to, into for war or for hunting. And then when you get them trained up to be a good war dog, you can put them on a chain, you know, and around whatever it is you want to guard. Like I have these around this trading post. I mean, these guys have caught, I don't know how many things that way. They're really good at their jobs. I love my dogs. I do eat my dogs. <laughs> Because I got like, look, look at it. Okay, dog, I got like, this is after I've called them a few times, but I mean, I got like huge flocks of dogs. I don't know where they are now. <laughs> Herds of dogs? Packs of dogs, there we go. So you can see them just all over the place, these puppies. You know, so you could neuter them. Creepy crawl. Uh, but I just like heck. You can make uh, stuff out of dog leather, and the dog uh, the dwarves don't seem to. Now, if they're pets, let me just show you this. So, you could say like this. Um, find a dog. Yeah, you could say that I'm training some of these. Domesticated, domesticated. Yeah, here we go. So here's all these dogs, and you could say I want to neuter this one. 
and train it to be a war dog, train it to be a blah, blah, blah. Or you could just say, you know what, make him a pet, available as a pet. Maybe a dwarf will come along and take him on as a pet. And that makes uh, the dwarves a little bit happier. But, of course, you don't want to, uh, I don't even think it'll let you uh, butcher somebody's pet. I mean, it's pretty horrible. Yeah, it won't let you do that. <laughs> so no, no surprise there. <laughs> uh, but like the stuff that doesn't have a pet, you could butcher it. So the hunting, I found, is kind of hit or miss. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, but once you get a big flock <clears throat> going, you know, you just, just don't kill uh, the, any of the animals at all. Don't neuter them, of course. And eventually you get a decent-sized flock and you can start culling them. And that produces a ton of meat and, and uh, wool or, or skins for leather so it takes a little while to get going uh, but once it gets going you know it'll it'll go <laughs> so, a lot of fun now what, what else is there yeah, you could melt down stuff like i said if you get attacked you almost kind of want to be raided after a certain point because uh, they'll come in with all this stuff and then you can melt it down and have like a huge it's basically free copper that you don't have to go mining Usually they have crappy stuff like copper gear. Sometimes they'll have iron. But you know, you melt it down, that saves you a few steps. So that's, uh, you know, look at Dwarf Fortress. You know, I'm not even anywhere close. I mean, some of these guys that played this, I mean, they make, make me look like a total noob. <laughs> even though I've put hundreds of hours into this at this point. Uh, there's still a lot for me to learn. You know, like I said, I don't even quite get the mine carts. And there's this business with these pumps. You can, like, stack them up so that they empty out onto a tile and another one picks it up and you can bring water or magma in from deep underground all the way to, the, to where you want it. There's these big monsters. <clears throat> Once you get down low enough to start getting the every now and then there'll be these huge beasts that'll come out and you'll have to sit, send your militia down to kill them. <laughs> you know, I think that's a hoot. I've yet to meet one that killed more than a couple of my guys. Uh, you know, usually the problem is the the guys in leather, since they're light, you know, they get down there real quick and get killed. <laughs> so I, I don't even send them anymore. Send the heavy guys in. It takes them longer to reach them, but they won't get killed. And then send the uh, leather guys in kind of as a, as a back. I want to show you this. So I kept reading about this magma. I finally reached it, but as you can see, it's like 19 levels below zero. So I don't know why. It, you could try to build pumps to pump this all the way up to where you need it. And I've seen people do that. It seems really complicated to me. Uh, what I'm thinking I would do instead of that is just basically start another colony for all intents and purposes just down here next to the magma. So you could have like your own, a whole separate city down here, basically, like the Undercity. <laughs> so you'd have your own bedrooms and you could assign people just to live down here, not not go up to the top, your own tavern down here. You know, everything would, you know, you'd, you'd be able just to live down here, not to keep going to the top. But the cool thing is there are these special, yeah, you know, like the Magma Forge. So that you wouldn't have to worry about wood. And so that would take care of that whole wood issue and having to keep chopping wood. So you could gradually move all of the all of the stuff. Well, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> you can move all of this this uh, smelting operations. And you just get rid of all this, all the smelting stuff up here, these workshops, and just have it all downstairs. And just have haulers or build a minecart in theory. <laughs> so you can load the minecart down on level 40 or whatever and just have it go all the way to the top you know i probably would never go to that much trouble some people do you know what i find just oddly relaxing too is oh yeah all these levels are flooded with water it's the reason i have it like this so i, I could tell you this real quick so every, you know you'll be digging trying to dig down lower and every now and then you'll get these water droplets so then you'll have to click on each one and say yes it's okay to go ahead and carve that out but the problem is sometimes you run into a lake or a huge supply of water or an aquifer and you could basically end up flooding your whole base uh, if you don't know what you're doing. So that's the reason they set it up that way. Uh, but what I found is you could uh, you can tunnel down one stair. I'll show you where I've done it. A little bit easier to see. Like, right, like here, 
So even though that's surrounded by water, you can you can make a stairway here and then quickly get in and smooth out around it, and the smoothing will keep it from flooding ever. Uh, so you make a nice so the all the water and dripping stones and everything you, you can have a place <laughs> that's dry uh, that you can keep going down. You know, there's more better there's better ways to do this. There's like I say, all this business with pumps. You could pump out the level. Just dump the water off the side or into a cavern, I guess, or something. Uh, so you could just dry out a level. As long as it's not totally submerged, you know, you can still do work down there. It's really fun when you're, especially when you're starting off, you know, you can just come in here and decide, like, oh, yeah, carve that out, carve that out. You know, sort of like this. And then they'll come, and then you'll find these gems and clusters in the wall. So you're always kind of on the lookout for them. You don't necessarily want to carve out, like up here, I was like, oh, I'm going to carve out this the whole thing. But, you know, this is kind of wasteful. I think you're better off with this kind of approach, so you can sort of see, like, where the stuff is you might want to, to mine out. You might miss a few gems here and there, but you'll find plenty enough. I mean, look at this metropolis. How many of these gems do I have? It's probably some insane amount. So I got 312 <laughs> cut gems. So I probably should make a bunch more jewelers just to encrust everything I could find. But you could, yeah, that's worth 40. <clears throat> some of these gems I find are worth like a thousand. Just, just rough. You know, just right out of the ground, they're worth a thousand. And then by the time you uh, cut them or put them in something, I mean, that adds a lot of value. So that's really fun. I'll show you the library I built. Where's that library? Yeah, you can see that's all. The, I don't really have a huge clothing industry, but oh, this guy's mad. Oh, that's a cat. Yeah, this is a stormy night. I'll see what he's got on. So we're in wool. Everything looks good. Got to talk that, whatever that is. Pants. Okay, I was going to show you the, uh, what is this? I think that's a tavern. Yeah, the fenced lunches. So really I should put a stockpile here with food in it. Now you can see, see like these, these foods, these uh, mules laying around? What happens is if you have a militia and you have them outfitted with backpacks, they'll put a bunch of mules in the backpack. So if the idea being if they travel somewhere, they'll have uh, meals to eat. The problem is when they switch back and forth between military mode and regular mode, they just dump all the food everywhere. So it's a big problem. It's a big glitch, in my opinion. It's oversight or bug, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, if you're not careful, if you don't dump it, like I need to come here and say dump that, they'll never come back for it. It's just useless food. Uh, but eventually it'll rot and create this gas bad air called miasma that has a bunch of problems associated with that but anyway I digress so <clears throat> somewhere here I have my library where's that library let's see these are there we go this is the library <laughs> so I made it too small you know some some person I was reading was like you don't need to make this stuff very big just keep it small I think that's bad advice <laughs> is if you like a build a massive thing you know this library I, I feel like I could have made this twice the size I don't know why I didn't there's no real penalties as far as I can tell to make things bigger you don't want to go you don't necessarily need to be ridiculous about it you know it could have been bigger than this you see all these people trying to crowd in here <clears throat> but anyway you see you got three bookcases tables chairs and I got a scholar and a scribe and Actually, I don't have a scholar. My scholar, a scholar must have died. To rectify that. Ooh, I have a legendary. Now, the problem with this, though, is Captain of the Guard, too. So you want, again, your Captain of the Guard to be distracted, coming down here and doing stuff. So I might pick somebody else. All these administrators. Huh? Skilled critical thinker. Oh, uh, yeah, just for fun. Put him in there. So the scholars will write books. Let's see if I can get a list of my... Uh, I'll write these scrolls. You can make codices and books, even. And 
they're worth a lot of uh, money, but it's just kind of, I think, more for roleplay value. You can see they got all these empty scrolls that come in and write on. I get to the bookcase. Now you can see all these books they, or scrolls they've written. They copied them. If I ever got traders to come this damn town, I could sell this stuff. That's one of the, yeah, this is worth a thousand gold. Or a thousand whatever the currency is here. One of the, the biggest pit peeve I have with the games, and I don't know, again, this could be user error, who knows. But these caravans seem to be just really rare, you know, once a year. And you gotta be careful not to miss even that, but they, they, they like half the time they only bring like a thousand gold worth of stuff. <laughs> like, man, I've got like, <laughs> you know, I've got uh, 14,000 created wealth. You know, I need more trade. I need I need like full on wagon. I need like a wagon train coming through here. Just infinite stuff I can trade, or at least let me trade for gold coins or something. Because my, you know, look at this. It's getting ridiculous. Like it's just not enough trade. Not again. It could be user error. Maybe in this, there's supposed to be like exploration missions. I've yet to figure out how that's supposed to work. something here that says no contact but I don't necessarily want to raid someplace I don't even know what's there you know, I haven't even contacted them yet <clears throat> I looked online about this and they said well just go in and demand a one-time tribute and then that's a way to establish contact sounds a bit crazy to me <laughs> I don't like that idea <laughs> I come in peace there should be like a come in peace option just to establish contact. Uh, but anyway, yeah, between the libraries, the taverns, the like, hospitals, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff. You, you guild halls, you can make it. You know, everything that you can make like these, these guild halls will be levels to it. Like this one's a grand guild hall. You know, because I got a bunch of uh, fancy stuff. And notice everything is engraved. I have nice chests in here. Even the door is nice. <laughs> this is exceptional. <laughs> Copper door. <laughs> so I don't know. It's not, you know, it's not a game for everybody. Some people would probably hate this. But man, for certain kinds of people, like yours truly, this is like just pure digital crack cookie. Man, I just, <laughs> just, you know, I don't even want to think. I don't think I've turned this thing off since I've got it downloaded. It's just been really insanely addictive just love it even though this the problems okay let me just wrap it up i can just go on forever but um you know what are my nitpicks with the game again this is the biggest thing for me is just like i want a way to see and i hope to god it's not here somewhere and i've just managed to miss it somehow that's my big fear so I'm just double checking some of this stuff like justice I, i've never done this i've never even looked at this before oh my god There's a whole, i just discovered a whole other aspect of this game my god i've never even looked at the screen oh my god so there's this whole other gameplay mechanic i, I guess i could interrogate and convict people okay jeez louise okay i got all these delinquents juvenile delinquents to deal with Interesting. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> Look at closed, cold convicts. Injured party. No sentence pending. And okay, yeah. I had no desired metal cages in four out of nineteen. Total news to me. I'd have to. Okay. Now see, it's kind of sucks into me again. I thought I was finishing this game, but no. Now I have to figure out how the justice system works. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> so I went to complain about it. And next thing I know, I'm, you know, back engaged again. Okay, yeah, th here's something that I think could be done a lot better. Like I said, I'm just having this big mess. You know, I should be able to sort, like, it'd be so nice if I could just say, look, just show me the stone workers stuff. I don't need to see everything. And I need to be able to do this better, at the very least, <clears throat> instead of having to do each one individually. 
Now, I don't know why I can't just click and drag that up. You know, that would make it a little bit easier. So that's something that bugs me. Um, okay. Yeah. Other stuff. Yeah, the work, I think the main thing that I would like to see that I don't see here yet is I want a list of like all my citizens and what they can do. Like there's, which ones are legendary, which ones are experts. You know, there's not really a good way that I found to be able to see that other than like coming in here and, you know, doing it this way. That's uh, super tedious. Uh, so that'd be a good thing for them to work on. Yeah, the pens and pastures are okay, I guess. <clears throat> Another thing, maybe you guys could help me with this. People have been playing longer. But like, when you want to make a bunch of bedrooms, you know, you saw me before. You like doing this, clicking here and clicking there and doing this like 40 times. You know, I wonder if there a oh, Multi. Okay, I'm not sure what multi means but I want to have a template to be like you know just make all your bedrooms without having to individually go in there and do that I know there's a blueprinting system but I don't think that's what that's for the only or I swear to God every time I look at this there's something I haven't seen before dig only ore and gem selected and auto mine only an auto mine any ore of the same type. Vein and gem mining. <coughs> <coughs> How do you know what kind of gem it is? The only gem selected. Hang on, alive. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this game just consistently makes you feel like a noob. No matter how much you play it, no how good you are. Anyway, I'm satisfied. I mean, my look, most people are happy. But anyway, that's an irritant. Another one is like this little problem here. Like they just throw their clothes that they don't want that are worn out on the ground. You have to come in here every time and do this. Now I did, I did a little research on that, and I found that there's a that DF hack thing. That's a whole other tool you can get. You could cheat with it too, which is kind of why I wanted to mess with it. I might be too tempted. <laughs> but it'd be nice if that was built in. Just automatically dispose of worn out stuff. I mean, that should be an option. But I think, <clears throat> holy cow, man. There is just way, way more to like about this game than to hate about it. Are you kidding me? That's just real. You have to kind of dig deep, <laughs> pun intended, <laughs> to find stuff to criticize. I just find it just absolutely mesmerizing. You know, even after I've played it all this time, like I said, I'm still finding like whole screens of stuff I didn't even know were there. You know, that's on top of them consistently developing it, adding new stuff, bringing in stuff from the ASCII versions. So suffice it to say, awesome game. You should definitely get this if you find this even remotely <laughs> compelling. Uh, it's got a few issues. It's nothing that's going to break the game or, or make you uh, want to stop playing. <clears throat> Mostly just kind of a little annoying things uh, that I wish they would fix or at least explain to me what I can do uh, to fix it myself. But, wow! <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to stop it there. Man, my throat's about to give out on me. I would hope you enjoyed this and definitely pick up a copy of this game. Dwarf Fortress! And that's all for this year's episode. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas! I got a hat here. Let me get my let me get my Christmas hat on. Yeah, it's a little. Christmas was yesterday or the day before. I don't I don't recall, but you know, still feeling festive. I think it's it's okay to celebrate a few days after, all the way through New Year's, really. Uh, Happy New Year's too. I don't know when you'll be watching this video, but it's, it's coming up soon. Hey, let's hope that the next year, uh, 23, is better than this year was. I'm ready to see the back of this year. It sucked. 
Get out of here! <laughs> Do a little better in 23 is my, uh, that's going to be my motto. Hope you guys uh, had a good uh, good holiday with your family. Didn't get caught up. A lot of snowstorms going. You know, I live in Minnesota, so it's pretty much always uh, cold enough to kill you here. <laughs> it's like 20, 30 below. It's not unusual this time of the year. Uh, you really don't want to go outside. I've got, actually, for Christmas, uh, got a heated vest. This is not it. <laughs> it's got these, it's like, like wearing a heating pad. Uh, man, I wish I had gotten that thing years ago. I might have uh, liked living in Minnesota much better with that thing. Ran into a lady, and uh, I don't know how the subject came up, but she kept talking about these uh, heated vests and how essential they were and how they were a game changer. And she's an immigrant to uh, uh, St. Cloud as well. So I thought, what the heck? I get, I get a couple, one for me, one for Elizabeth, and yeah. <laughs> Well worth it. Wow. Yeah, definitely want to pick those up. Anyway, what am I talking? About? Oh, I want to thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, people. Even you. Yeah, you. Thank you for supporting the show. Keeping Match Chat on the air. You know, I had some. We had a kind of a hiccup a while back. I thought maybe a 498 would be the last episode. I said, we'll go to 500. And I'll stop at a 500, and we'll take a look again, see where the the funding is, see if people, uh, you know, want to see the show continue. If there's a little little cheer, a little more support there, and it looks like we're going to make it. I haven't checked it today, but I, I noticed some new uh, patrons. So if that's you, hey, thank you uh, so much. Keep it literally. Like, you're making the difference of keeping the show on the air. If you are, are one of these folks, I mean, I have uh, supporters of this show that have been with me for over 10 years now. You know, so it's it's very humbling. I'm very proud of this uh, this show, and I want to keep going. You know, I'm always uh, trying to get new guests to come on, look at new games. You know, I like to do a little mix, do some reviews, do some retrospectives, just have some fun with it, uh, as well as the serious sort of uh, uh, history stuff that we do. But you know what the show is like. You you've been a supporter. Uh, anyway, for whatever reason, you're like, I don't know if I want to support this guy. Uh, he's kind of weird. I like these other YouTubers better. <laughs> I don't, whatever it is. If you like the show, if you watch something and you love it, you should support it. You know, don't expect everybody else to, uh, you know, to pick up the slack. I'm not asking for a million dollars here, just a couple of bucks. Uh, pop over to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. You can set that up or you go to uh, matchat.us, go to the PayPal route if you prefer the PayPal. And of course, uh, retweeting or tweeting about the show, like even just liking it, subscribing, all that stuff makes a difference. So thank you very, very, very much. Thank you for your support. Thank you. All right, what about the news on the Met Gear? I got some news. Oh, who is this? Shane Stacks. Oh, Mr. Shane Stacks. Send me a Christmas card, he did. Only person, only Christmas card I got was from Shane Stacks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got some from my, you know, uh, family members, but, you know, I always like that. You know, it's kind of a lost thing. Do people still send Christmas cards? Yes. Stacks family still sends Christmas cards. No, a lovely uh, little photo there, too. Okay, let's see. What is Shane reporting on? Uh, good old games is giving away Worms Revolution Gold Edition. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a huge fan of Worms. I used to play the heck out of that game back in my college days. This is uh, such great memories. And this is before really the internet was a major thing. Uh, when, when I was in college, it was just kind of starting. <laughs> it was kind of a big deal back then. You know, I remember people talking about. Oh, Heinz. Heinz Ketchup has a website now. <laughs> why, why does Heinz Ketchup need a website? That's ridiculous. You know, everybody was doing the GeoCities thing and posting bad poetry and, and uh, music on like these uh, MP3 sites and everything. But man, I totally lost the thread. Oh, uh, but anyway, it was fun for me in college uh, during holidays and things. Everybody would go home, except for a few losers. Uh, a few cool people, you know, we didn't, uh, we'd all get together in the dorm and play Worms, you know, hot seat that thing, it's just a, a lot of fun, you know, really good memories of that, uh, anyway, let's see, so you get that for free, it's only like 20 hours left, so it's probably too late for you, but, you know, 
I'm going to go ahead and pick it up anyway. You have a lot of fun. Great great holiday game. Uh, you don't need the internet. You know, you just have your friends around hot seat that thing. It's fun. It looks like they also have Shadowrun Trilogy up there for 11 bucks, Tyranny for 12 and uh, Vampire Masquerade's Bloodlines for 10 bucks. So again, very limited. You want to jump over there real quick if you want these games because the deadline is ticking. So thanks, Shane, for that heads up. Uh, Matt Workula. Workula, Workula, Workula. He got uh, some videos that he found. Or let me uh, get this straight. So he, Ken Williams, probably know who that is, Sierra Online founder. Him and his uh, wife, Roberta. Well, he found some old 60 Minutes, I think that's what it is, uh, some footage from back in 1983. So he posted this on his Twitter feed. Uh, it was kind of a, it's a nice little overview. You really see, it's kind of the slice of life of what it was like. Man, you know, I just, I'd give almost anything to be able to get a time machine and go back and, you know, be, be part of that scene. You know, it just was a really unique time and place, I think. Uh, not just for video games, but really for the historical time, you know, important historical era. Uh, anyway, you can look at the video. He's, uh, Ken himself is kind of ashamed of it, sounds like. I don't know what he's saying here. You know, I watched it, I guess, I guess he's kind of finds it cringeworthy now. I don't know if that's just the age thing or he thinks it's not, uh, you know, I guess his, his attitudes have changed, you know, as you would expect. <laughs> You know, it's 1983, you know, you, you probably don't feel the same way you did back then about anything. Uh, any, anyway, he says, uh, I almost didn't share this video. I don't really like how I come across in it. He was uh, 28 years old when uh, this video was made, and he says, uh, sometimes, what, and like sometimes happens with people in their 20s, I thought I knew everything. It's painful to watch these old videos. <laughs> you know, I... You know, I, I understand. I'm not as old as Ken is, but uh, but yeah, uh, being in the... I can think back when I was 20-something and just, oh. <laughs> the hubris, uh, the uh, the arrogance. You know, I didn't even accomplish anything like he did with Sierra, but even in my case, you know, I, I can relate to what he's saying there. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad he went ahead and posted these things. I think it's, it's important and it's fun. I don't know anybody but a kind of nut nut job that would try to you know judge him too harshly based on this. You know, I, I never get that. That that's not me anyway. All right, and then moving on, uh, intro or indie retro news has a little something for you if you're a fan of the Duke Nukem Forever series, and, and who's not? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, let's see. The first ever. Or, uh, apparently, Duke Nukem 4 had a prototype side scroller. Or had a, they were planning to do this side scroller 2D game, uh, kind of. In, it looks like kind of like in the vein of a Turrican, or I guess maybe a. Yeah, it looks kind of like Turrican to me. Uh, let's see what they've got. But anyway, this thing was never released. I guess it got lost, but now it's found. It was lost, but now it's found. The platformer version of Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, let's see, it was 1996, got scrapped. Today we are graced with a playable build of the Lost Game. The release includes four builds from that period of development, including two O's. A setup with DOSBox ready to launch is also included in the zip. Merry Christmas to you all. Let's rock. Okay. Now let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was looking for quotes about mines and mining and dwarves, and I kind of went down a huge dwarven hole that didn't sound right <laughs> i'm just not doing too good with this okay uh the quote goes something like this all creation is a mine and every man a miner little quote there by mr abraham lincoln hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next time
What we've got here is a failure to accumulate.